college football on this Thanksgiving evening on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. Cliff Kingsbury in his third season has his club bowl eligible and the one-time outstanding quarterback has built quite a spread machine with its air raid looking for a much needed victory in Austin, Texas. And there's Charlie Strong as we mentioned earlier in year two. Already highly successful at Louisville, longtime assistant defensive coordinator who did such a masterful job in the Sunshine State of Florida, trying to get it done in the Lone Star State. And Jaheim Grant will be unable to bring this one out. And after Texas deferred to open after winning the toss, what are the three things, Spencer, we need to know about Texas Tech? Tim, first of all, you know they're going to use pace and tempo as a tactical advantage and until, of course, Texas can shut them down with their defense. And then they've got to exploit the numbers advantage in that run game. They're going to get a steady diet of nickel and dime. That look is going to really make the middle of that defense a little bit softer. They'll have a chance to exploit it. And then, of course, they've got to create run-pass conflicts. That means if it's third and two, they can do either or. That puts a little bit of doubt in decisions in the minds of the defense. Well, you talk about conflict. They can deliver that to any defense. Yes, indeed. First and 10 from the 25. Quick out pattern taken in by Ian Sadler. And the sophomore from Argyle, Texas, gets it out. John Bonney, the nickel backer, made the stop. You see the numbers on Mahomes. He's going to eclipse 4,000 in his career. Third, as we mentioned, in FBS overall in total offensive yardage gained. And there's Grant. They'll use him a lot on jet sweeps. Expect him to get the ball in a variety of locations throughout the course of the night, much as does Dajay Johnson for Texas when he's in the game. Timmy, you can see the early narratives emerging. Texas not being able to get enough personnel on the field. They're slow to affect the kind of defense that they want. If they can't get matched up early, pace and tempo already been used by Texas Tech. Second and eight with trips up to the top of your screen. Texas playing a two-deep safety look, playing it conservative. This is going to be a pitch-and-catch opportunity here. There it is. Still off the curl. It goes to Lauderdale, and Devin Lauderdale has a first down into Texas territory. Again, Bonnie, 24, playing the nickel tonight. One of those freshmen, a redshirt freshman from Lamar High School in Houston, Texas, with the stop, a pickup of 10. At some point in time, Tim Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator for Texas, has got to make a decision to affect this offense. That means they've got to get out of this catch technique and play press. Yeah, Ray Washington, he should get north of 1,300 yards on the ground after tonight's game. Stopped by Bryce Cottrell, 91, the junior from Plano, Plano West. Right outside the Dallas area. He did a nice job with Cottrell coming down the line of scrimmage to make that play. Second and seven now. Oh, that's a beautiful slant pattern caught. And it's Jonathan Giles, the former quarterback. Josh Kobe, they're defending on that play, Tim. He came up and uh, made a tremendous recovery on that. But again, it was a nice smash route concept that Texas Tech deployed there to get a vertical threat and then to come underneath that with a soft part in that void in that defense for a big game. They seem to be kicking it on all cylinders here on their opening possession. Look at those numbers. There's Davis, Reginald Davis. This is about forcing you to defend the width and the depth of the field as Dylan Haynes made the stop. Fast pitch, you can see the ball is not the best pitch, but it was caught <laughs> by design more than th anything else. It's a tremendous job of hauling that one in. And again, when you've got a nice catch radius, you can be off the mark. Great receivers can make you and save you. Second down and 11 from the 31 of Texas. Empty backfield, five wides. Mahomes runs it and goes right into a Longhorn road stop. Nashawn Hughes, number 40. Sophomore coming up with the stop there. And now a third and long, first one of these that we've seen in this series. Nashawn working out of that defensive end position was able to shed and release. And Mahomes, you don't call this number very much in terms of a call run, but if you're in a favorable down a distance situation, that's what you'd look for. You went a little bit off script there. Here's the pressure. Yeah, there it comes Mahomes. He's tough when he ad libs, but this pass is overthrown intended for Jakeem Grant. And Vance Bedford pretty pumped up with what he's seeing early on. He is uh, one of the more enjoyable defensive coordinators we've talked to all season. In fact, he and his counterpart from Texas Tech, David Gibbs, two of the most enjoyable we've had all year. They're going to go for it on fourth and nine. That's what he's telling his team stay out there. This is four down territory. Dylan Haynes in that single safety look back there. 
Let's see if he's going to be stressed a little bit. Grant is in the slot, number 11, the second of three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Tim, there's a wide open opportunity here. Mahomes looking for him, overshoots it, intercepted. It's Dylan Haynes. Haynes steps out of bounds near the 25 at the 24. So on a fourth down play, I think he, I think he was trying to get it to Grant and overshot him. Yeah, I think it was Sadler that was in the area. And then again, the single safety look, that's just like stealing, man. It was a bad, ill-advised pass, first of all. His man was covered in pants. He said, that's what we're looking for, turnovers. In our meeting, Tim, he talked about that's one of the things they need to do to give their offense a chance, because you know that they're going to try to run the ball and burn that clock. Well, you're going to get the ball on downs anyway, but the momentum and the, you know, the impact of a pick like that, that's something that Bedford's defense can build on. Yeah, because you know Texas Tech is looking for points off possessions. That's one of the benchmarks that determines if they're successful. They've been denied an opportunity for points off their initial possession. From the 24 on first down. Now, Texas is running with a couple of young backs tonight. Chris Warren takes it ahead for a yard or two. He and Kirk Johnson will be called upon. Gerard Hurd, who was named the starter a couple of games in. You're going to be seeing Tyrone Swoops again coming in once they're in the red zone. This is a young man that's played far better at home than he has on the road. Second and eight. That's how he beats you with his legs. They're hoping for a performance, Spencer, like the one they had from him against Cal in a game that very easily could have gone their way were it not for a missed extra point. And to do that, Tim, they've got to get some called runs. They're certainly going to rely on his legs to do that. The pass is not one of the hallmarks of what they do best. So, again, it shows a mark of immaturity, though, that he only performs well or tends to at home. Warren banged up behind the line that time. Great penetration. Hinton coming through, and he also had plenty of help from Brandon Jackson. Well, you can see here, makes one guy miss in the open. Does her does the tremendous job of avoiding him and then getting up field for positive yardage to advance the chains. Just shy of the 35-yard line. Second and nine. Warren is the setback. They'll dump it to him in the safety valve. He's tackled in the open field. Nice job defensively by Ja'Shawn Johnson, number seven, a redshirt freshman. One of the three really solid youngsters that David Gibbs' defense is founded on right now as he tries to repair what has been a very bad defense for a number of years for the team from Lubbock. That was Chris Warren, though, the young freshman, one of two they'll be counting on in the running back position for the Longhorns. Taking their time, trying to make sure they're in the right call. A three-by-one formation, three receivers up top. Two, they're empty the backfield, baby. They're coming vertical. Plenty of time. That pass is caught up around the 45 by Marcus Johnson. And one of the 22 seniors from League City, Texas, Clear Springs High, gets out for a first down. That's a confidence boost for the youngster and quarterback. On two levels, clean pocket. You can see there plenty of time this herd have to navigate. The tackle's doing a great job of double teaming and then paying it off, moving the ball downfield. I love the confidence in the empty formation, a declared pass scenario. Not afraid to toss it. Nice. Around the pitch back the other way to John Burt. Very athletic freshman. And Texas Tech was ready for it. They see plenty of that in practice. And he stopped back at the 45-yard line. So a loss on the play as Madison comes over to lead the charge for Tech. You mentioned the freshman running backs that Texas is having to go to. Jonathan Gray, proven senior, out with a turf toe. Deontay Foreman, the super sophomore, had a finger surgery. Uh, performed about two or three days ago earlier this week on his pinky. And he was not dressed as if he was going to go. We see a flag prior to the snap. Gray did come out. The false start by number 74 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. He did come out in pads. Now, whether that was because it was senior night and he just wanted to look good for the, the pictures, we don't know. But it appears that both he and Deontay Foreman are out, and that's big for this Texas offense to get Gerard Hurd, their best runner, some help. That's right, Tim. There's over 1,200 yards of production that won't be in that starting backfield for the Texas Longhorns, and ultimately those two replacements, two freshmen, 212 yards between. Second and 17, that pass is caught. It's Burt. It's the first down. 
Great job of moving Hurd out of the pocket, giving him some ability to see the edge. By number 75 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty and replay second down. Well, that's unfortunate because it happens to a youngster, Tristan Miss Mickelson, who's moved into the starting right tackle position. Patrick Vahe is out, got a knee problem, and they had to move him up and Kent Perkins over to the guard spot. Well, you can see the hole occurred right there on the outside. When a guy that's more athletic gets away from you a little bit, there's a tendency to reach your hands out there. When they're exposed like that, that side judge can see exactly what you're holding. Well, what did you think of the way the uh, quarterback heard how did he spin it, those two that you've seen there? <laughs> I, I really liked it a lot, but I think the fact that they moved him out of the pocket so he'd have a clear view was more indicative of how much success I think they think they can have. Second and 27. That pass is overthrown. It's an intermediate route that seems to be the problem for him. Going for the fullback, senior Alex Delatore, number 36. Yeah, Delatore's got to come a little bit flat. That was actually what we call an arrow route. When he goes in, he had a nice matchup, but he just needs to come flatter to the line of scrimmage and Hurd to do a better job because there is no one outside of him that's just but the sideline. It's a really nice, safe play, but you got to execute the pass. Warren back in at the setback position. Out of the gun, third and 27. Going to delay to him. Trying to get a little better field position before they line up for the punt formation at the 35-yard line, right into the teeth of that Texas Tech defense. Among others, Demetrius Alston, 43, and the stud, Devontae Hinton, number 34, the freshman, involved in that stop. Cameron Batson will drop back deep. There he is, standing at his 20-yard line, and Michael Dixon is averaging 41.3 per boot. We'll punt away. Angling towards the sidelines. Nice punt. Patrick Mahomes. We saw a solid drive stymied once they got into the scoring zone. What will we see next? Stay tuned. It's raining now here in Austin. Nothing, nothing our score early. You know, all season long, our producer, Mike Kelly, one of the best in the business, has been finding our crew for minor infractions, all of them minor, <laughs> in our kangaroo court. And throughout the year, we raised $2,000 amongst the crew. And yesterday, we donated that money to Front Steps Austin, a nonprofit organization that provides a variety of needs and services to Austin's homeless population. Uh, put in perspective what uh, the holiday means it really does, Tim, and I had a chance to talk to Bruce in a private moment and had a chance to settle in on and focus on the things that matter most in life. Good day. Well, the son of the missionary you know all too well. DeAndre Washington takes it ahead for about, well, maybe no game. That's uh, Boyette Jr., 93. Great push rusher inside from Humble, Texas. Junior making the stop. In fact, it's a loss of a yard, second and 11. There you go with a quick out. That goes to Pearson, 83, and right away Dylan Haynes is there. Well, that was a beautiful job by Dylan Haynes, open field tackle. He came down out of his high safety position, closer to the line of scrimmage where he could make that fantastic play. That's a result of game planning, outstanding job of putting him in position to make a nice play. Three by one formation now, Timmy, to the field, the wide side. And they really have been keeping an eye on Jakeem Grant. Bruce Feldman noticed that in the opening series. Let's see what Mahomes does here. Checks down for Washington incomplete. So negative yardage created in the first couple of downs, and that leads to a punt formation and a three and out. Yeah, and the, the, the script will be flipped here, perhaps, and then if it's a bad punt, the rain is starting to mist a little bit heavier now. Texas will have been successful in flipping the field position, and that's exactly what they want to do. Now they've got to maintain possession of the ball to keep their game plan intact. Number two in the Big 12 in returns, Dodge Johnson. He's got uh, quite a motor. Senior from nearby Pflugerville. Hendrickson High. Taylor Samank will punt it away. He's had some issues with his hamstring. Did not play a couple of weeks back in that game we had against Kansas State on their senior day. But he is healthy and good to go for tonight's game. We've got a conversation here. Let's hear the referee. He set the play clock to 40 seconds. So we just had a clock situation that needed to be taken care of. Samank will get this off around his 10-yard line. Low, but end over end, taken off the bounce and returnable for Jackson. Nice. He has a seam, big time, all the way to the 32 of Texas Tech. 
41-yard punt, a 28-yard return, and yes, we do have a little Dylan Hankey back at the 47-yard line of Texas Tech. So let's check this out. Cooper Castleberry is our referee. Looks like we've got a potential block in the back situation. An illegal block in the back against the receiving team number 30. The team you have in its first down. Looked good for a moment. But oh, the proverbial block in the back. <laughs> Made them all wet again. 7-16 remaining here in the opening quarter. Oh my. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. A little Matthew McConaughey and uh, Roger Clemens, the rocket on the sidelines. No need for an umbrella for those two. Class of 80 for Roger and 93 for McConaughey. And uh, now let's get the three things that we need to know, Spencer, from you when Texas has the ball. Well, you know Texas Tech is about counting plays and, you know, points per possession. So ball control is how you counter that, right? And then you limit those possessions. you got to move the chains, Timmy. That means you got to move them. No turnovers. You've already had one penalty, but you've got a turnover to counteract that. And then, of course, you got to do the last thing. That's manage first and third down scenarios. That will help achieve number one. I don't know what it is about Texas and FS1 and Fox, but every time we come here, there's a torrential downpour. Tyrone <laughs> Swoops is in at quarterback. Gerard Hurd is in the game, and he takes the reverse, coming back the other way. So the 18 really gets in, and there is a late hit, and there comes the flag at the 46 by Ni Nigel Bethel. Yeah, Nigel Bethel came down hard, and again, he was trying to maintain the edge, and he did a decent job of stringing the play out, but a little bit too aggressive there on the finish. <laughs> Officials trying to dress him up to get that midriff there back covered too. Back to the play. A late hit out of bounds by number one of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty and it's first down. <laughs> there you see, he just put a shoulder in the Timmy. I, I don't know how violent it was, but it certainly was out of bounds. It, again, the fortunate thing is it was a shoulder to shoulder with not a helmet to helmet hit. Just gotta be aware where you are. No doubt. So they mark it at the 39-yard line, first and ten for Texas. The reason we point this out, they played Kansas State in that game that was televised, and they controlled the game. And in this kind of environment where you can play it in a phone booth, look out. I mean, it could be a damage Texas, and there's Swoops at running back this time, taking the handoff from Hearn. And we mentioned earlier with Kurt Johnson, 28, and Chris Warren, 25, both young guys. Maybe a little help from Tyrone at 250-plus. All six, four of him at running back doesn't hurt. Well, you remember what Jay Norvell, the play caller, told us yesterday. He says if he were a wagering man, number 18 would get the ball a lot today. Now, he doesn't possess the speed of Hurd, but you see the stop made by J.J. Gaines. Here's the problem. If you're Texas Tech, you're not sure with 18 and 13 out there, which one's going to take the snap. That's part of it, but it's also to a numbers game inside the boundary. They won't pass it very much, but you know he's capable of passing the ball. If you're a wide receiver, you've got man coverage. You've got a chance to get a gash type play as a result of that. Right. You know they're going to load the box with eight and possibly nine guys. All right. Warren has come back in for swoop, so he's out of the game now. Third down and nine from the 38 of Texas Tech. Heard. Well, that one should have been caught. Oh, catch it. Right in the number for Dodge Johnson. The senior just dropped it. Dodge had had it right in his hands, Tim, and that's the thing that Texas cannot do. They're not going to throw it a whole lot, but when they do, they must make a statement that they're going to secure it and make the defense defend them. You don't have to defend somebody if you're not going to catch it. You don't take them honestly. Got to catch that ball. Michael Dixon comes in to punt it away. They'll try to get this pooch to land and move forward. And it lands like a pitching wedge. And it will come down at the 14-yard line. Just a 24-yard boot, but they do plant Texas Tech in difficult circumstances at their own 14. The state capital here in Texas. Timmy, we talk about preparing for all kinds of scenarios. How about a seven-man box? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. We're going to build an eight-man box with an extra guy. Watch J.J. Gaines come up top. Here he is on the outside here. He will create the extra defender and fold back underneath to make an outstanding tackle in space. Tremendous job by J.J. Gaines. That's the definition of men in the box right there. Yeah, Andre 
Washington has stopped in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. So the Longhorn defense getting some negative plays on first down. Malik Jefferson, the aforementioned four or five star freshman from Mesquite, Texas, that Bruce Feldman talked about in our open, in to make that play. A little pitch back, going with a little flea flicker to Sadler, and he's wide open. All the way out near midfield, they'll rule him out at the 49-yard line, 36 yards on the connection. Well-designed play to get out of trouble, but I will say this, Texas was not going to get beat over the top. They had, I don't know how, but three defenders over the top to prevent that play from breaking out. Well, they just took care of the field position quandary, didn't they? First and 10 from their own 49. Mahomes in traffic. That's Ridgeway. Hassan Ridgeway, the first to get there. Pulls him down at his own 48. Timmy, if you look at it right, right here on the outside, that, that's the guy that's going to leak down the field and eventually come open. He just kind of leaks underneath the coverage and let everybody clear out. And there is a big void underneath that. It's a zone coverage. Again, they weren't going to make sure that the big-time guy over the top, Grant, was not going to burn him, but they made sure, and then they left the underneath pattern wide open. Uh, pretty obvious that Kingsbury and his offensive cohort, Eric Morris, up top, I figured out that number 11 was being overplayed. That pass is caught on the quick curl to Reginald Davis. Gets them back into Texas territory at the 47-yard line. So it's third down coming up. So this is all about real-time adjustments now. If, you, if Grant, number 11, is going to be covered in triple team as he was on that last play, who else is going to step up to be able to make a play? And then from the coaching staff, how are they going to integrate that third player, that fourth receiver in to make up the difference? Number four, Justin Stockton is checked into the game as the setback out of the gun for Mahomes. That pass is batted down. Big number 93, Paul Boyette Jr. Got his big mid up there and knocked it back. Boyette, kind of like a J.J. Watt-S type timing right there. Drops back and then gets that big mid up in the air. Mahomes had it batted down. He thought he had a completion. That's great timing by Boyette. Well, Texas Tech does resolve the field position issue. But so far, so good for this Texas defense holding down a team that's number three in overall offense in the FBS. It really is, Tim. And that last play was an indication of, the, of engagement level of those defenders because that time, you got to be thinking about what you're doing to make that play. That was a low punt. It's returnable for Jackson. And he gets it out to the 18-yard line, a 38-yard boot, an 8-yard return. Gerard Hurd. Young man with incredible potential. Could be the foundation of the future. And the 18-wheeler is there to get it done when they're in the scoring zone. They are coming up next. College football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. Well, what a game we had for you on Saturday. Sixth-ranked Fighting Irish taking on ninth-ranked Stanford in the biggest game of the weekend with both teams trying to move into the college football playoffs. It all starts Saturday at 7 Eastern, only on your local Fox affiliate. Christian McCaffrey trying to make another move to get back in that Heisman race in the thick of it. Some people think he is. There is a connection, a big-time connection to go today in the college football playoff. Braden Fajoko with that stop of Chris Warren right there. When you consider that Texas is the team that beat Oklahoma, beat them soundly in the Red River rivalry, and Notre Dame hammered Texas. A lot is being made of that from a comparison standpoint, but I think the committee is really looking at it from week to week with a blank sheet every week. There's Hurd looking for the boundary. And he gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And the weather conditions after the start of the game and senior night festivities have gotten a little bit more damp, haven't they, Bruce? Yeah, Timmy, it's been a, pretty much a downpour from the time Texas took the field. The other thing that I, I don't know if it's easy to tell, but it's really blowing pretty hard, so no. I can see why Texas Tech, especially Pat Mahomes, was having trouble not just gripping the ball, but actually with the, with the wind affecting the passes. By the way, the weather is going to follow us up into the Midwest, into Kansas, where they're expecting a wintry mix and snow overnight we'll have Kansas State and Kansas on Saturday Heard looking and finding John Burt but he dropped it had it lost it on the way down and it's slippery 
When it's wet. I believe the Commodores did that song back <laughs> in the mid-70s. Yeah, John Bird broke open, man. He's been making some big plays for this team. You can see him on the corner route there on the outside. He had to adjust to it just a little bit, but he found the soft spot in between those two defenders and tried to make a little pirouette turn, but just couldn't handle it because of the wet weather. You remember that old song, Slippery When It's Wet? I do. Dixon to put it away at his 10-yard line. <laughs> yes, I do. Cameron Batson back deep. Let's it go. Off of the fair catch, and now takes a, a bounce for Texas Tech out to the 32. So a 47-yard boot. Well, we were talking about the connection with Notre Dame and both Texas and Oklahoma. As you look at our Fox 4, Spencer, quickly, your thoughts on the way it shapes up right now. Your Sooners cracking in there, and they're number three overall with the college football playoff committee. I like where Oklahoma is at that four spot. I think Derrick Henry is going to lead Alabama all the way to a championship opportunity, and Baker Mayfield's name is going to be thrust back up there. If you recall back in week three, maybe perhaps it was we had that Oklahoma call, uh, that Baker Mayfield kind of gave me the impression that he had a little bit of DNA of the Heisman in him. At the time, people thought I was crazy, but he, he plays the game like Jay at that position like Johnny Manziel. He's an outstanding talent. He's bigger, really, and stronger in some areas than, than Manziel was. Just hasn't had the dynamic plays on the grandest stages yet. There's a quick out to Lauderdale. And Lauderdale has the first down. Out to the 43. We have a late fumble. I think we did. Texas may have it. Dylan Haynes is near it. And also Holton Hill, number five. He may have come away with a recovery. Holton Hill needed to do that because he was the one that missed the open field tackle in the first place, and he atoned. Didn't wait for the next play. He came immediately and got his head back in the fray. Well, Dylan Haynes, who had an interception earlier, made the stick on Lauderdale, and then the ball popped free late as he was spun to the field. That's a beautiful strip. Really well done by Jefferson. 46 Malik Jefferson with the strip. Big time play right there. That shows you that freshman's strength. The on the field is under further review. I think that's a I think that's an accurate call for a fumble right there. Well, that's the reason why Malik Jefferson was one of the he was the best player, at, particularly at the linebacker position when he came out last year, along with Anthony Wheeler. He is a playmaker extraordinaire, a hybrid type player. He can play physical against the run, but he can run and chase with the best of them as well. Along with Anthony Wheeler, that's the heart and soul of the inside of this defense. Cooper Castleberry is our referee. Mike Pereira is at his uh, turducken tonight with <laughs> Joe Buck and <laughs> Troy Aikman. So we can just uh, give it our best guesstimate based on what the review guys are going through right now. As you see the injured Peter Jenkins, one of the 22 seniors leaving the field favoring one of those legs as he makes his way back to the sidelines. But it appeared to me, Spencer, as though Malik Jefferson had stripped the ball. He was in the process of coming loose as he was tumbling down. And this this call should stand. Absolutely. And, and our crew got a great look at that. When he spent, he spun around and his back was to us. You could clearly see that his After knees... After further were review, up. the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Jim Blackwood and D. Anderson are re replay officials. Agree with us, and uh, the ball is turned over. So the Longhorns have it. And a magnificent play by Malik Jefferson. You know, this, this is a big-time playmaker right here, Spencer. Well, he knows this is a seminal moment. And again, you better believe that Charlie Strong has talked about this. They know if they're going to get seven in a row here uh, in terms of Del K. Roy Stadium against this Texas Tech team, they have got to find a way to get turnovers to augment their offense that is not at 100%. Kurt Johnson, 28. The uh, true freshman from San Jose, California, is in the backfield. Out of the shotgun. It's Johnson. Welcome to the game, Kirk. <laughs> Inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. This call of Captain Kirk on that one. He hit that corner hard, man. It was a great, well-designed play. Found a soft spot on that edge, and he just used the speeds, did the young freshman. Well, beautiful play fake, too, by Hurd on that read, wasn't it? I it mean, was. he, he had a lot of linebackers just uh, staying right with Gerard Hurd, and we've got an injured Red Raider. Micah Alway made the tackle.
Timmy, it's about these edge blockers. When they can get a hook on the outside to seal that corner and reach block and get that head on the outside, that's what you're looking to do. A little hole in there in the way, but that's what gave him the edge, and Kirk just got to the perimeter and used some of that speed and power. Young freshman navigating the space. How about that downfield? By the way, it was Alway that was hurt after making that stop. And they're taking him as he walks gingerly to the sidelines. He's one of the better defenders that they have, and... One of the few seniors on David Gibbs' defense. First and goal, ball at the nine for Texas. Nothing doing for Kirk Johnson this time. Stopped a yard or two behind the line of scrimmage. Pete Robertson, who was a sack machine a year ago, his numbers have not been as good this season. He was a preseason All-Big 12 performer. Sometimes when you go up on the scouting report, it's more difficult to impact the game. If he's still their leading tackle, he's going to be active in there, particularly on short yardage scenarios. On second down, Johnson again, nothing doing. Boy, how about the physicality of Devontae Hinton, number 34? Well, he's a young player that they really like a lot. David Gibbs said that he is, he's got that low center of gravity, and he really fights denies him an opportunity and David loves this guy he's looking for someone to be the bell cow for his defense he's a young player but Hinton is that guy that's stepping up right now David came over from the University of Houston left a really good defense behind that has had quite a season plays Navy in a big game in the American Conference this weekend look at the Longhorns going empty backfield again five wides trips to the bottom of your screen heard with the separation and down he goes at the 15. Tavon Madison comes away with a sack. That's unheard there because when you spread out five wide, you know, you've got to look for your escape path where the least amount of bodies are. And it wasn't to the left. It was to the right. you got to have vision. And again, plus he doesn't have the ball in the proper hand. Tries to change it late in the mix. He got brought down for a loss. All right, Nick Rose, his longest is 46 yards, 9 of 12 on the year. This will be a 32-yard boot. Senior from Dallas, Hyde Park. And we wind down to the end of the first quarter, so that will be the first play. The potential of getting the first points of the night when we return for quarter number two. Little fireworks on senior night, but as they say, the light has gone out with defense and rain early on. Texas Tech is tied with TCU for number two in the country, only behind Baylor for points in the first quarter, averaging just over 14. Spencer, as we begin play in the second, finding Jakeem Grant seems to be the issue right now for the Red Raiders. It is a problem. Devin Lauderdale, somebody's got to step up among that receiving core and then fill that void because it's clear that Texas is not going to let number 11 beat them deep. So again, it's incumbent upon many of these players. About seven different guys, double digits in receptions. They've got to step up to him. Rose is boot. Moving to the right, just gets it through the upright. And the Longhorns lead by three in the rain on Thanksgiving night. College football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. With Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando, and Bruce Feldman down on the sidelines, got an injury update for us, or two. Yeah, Tim, a couple of them. Peter Jenkins, senior linebacker, right knee injury. He has been taken into the locker room. Also, starting defensive tackle, another senior, Desmond Jackson, has a stomach illness. He will not play tonight. One other one, Kirk Johnson, who had that big run earlier, the true freshman, he's actually being checked out now on the sidelines as well. well we may see more of swoops in that backfield if this keeps up. Well, they have four coming in guys that were scheduled to get the ball two of them were quarterbacks and two were freshman running backs and so one of those freshmen down now remember foreman with the bad finger and jonathan gray with the turf toe both out three nothing texas well Jakeem grant might get a touch on a kick but no they'll angle it away and it goes out of bounds and that's a flag that means outstanding field position off of the, the penalty here that will set him up at the 35-yard line, and let's get a Lowe's game break from Rob Stone in Los Angeles. All right, so let's talk a little hoops. Second meeting of the year between Texas and Washington. Prince eBay down low with the slam. Shaka Smart and the Longhorns up six in the second half. 
Well, if Rob Stone is a man for all seasons. <laughs> if it's well, if it's not basketball, <laughs> he was with me uh, for the uh, Dave Gabbett tip-off games last week. And if he's not doing that on football, rest assured, some World Cup soccer action. <laughs> Master many oh, failure few. Absolutely. Here's DeAndre Washington. I heard for no gain, he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Both front sevens have been stout in this game, and the precipitation may have a little something to do with that. Ball boy Ed Jr. making the tackle. Be interesting to see with the wind circumstances. Change of quarter, how that affects Mahomes. That pass is air mail. Wow! Oh, and then it goes into the hands of Grant. To Keith Grant. Hello, how do you do? Ricochet you. That's borderline immaculate reception. It's close enough to me. I mean, Let's it go is. ahead and say it is, Tim. Yeah. What a fabulous opportunity for Texas Tech, who have been held scoreless here. This is a team that averages 42.4 points a game. And again, this was a sure interception. Out of the hands, now he becomes a defender. And number 11, Jakeen Grant, is sitting there waiting for him. We said he was going to be a box of dynamite, but we didn't know it was going to come that way. Holton Hill had it, then got hit. <laughs> And then the ball, Jakeem Grant wound up with it. Wow. I'm looking for a few, a Frenchy Fuqua somewhere out there. <laughs> Hatfield with the extra point. There's the pop. And that was from Lauderdale. Devin Lauderdale dislodged the ball. Well, if you're having problems finding Jakeem Grant, divine intervention will always help you out on Thanksgiving. 7-3 our score it was Devin Lauderdale who became a defensive back here that spearheaded this play, Spencer. Well, it was an outstanding effort. Again, Lauderdale, we said a few minutes ago, had to become a factor, but not as a defensive back that we think it would come. He turned really quickly and gave number 11 an opportunity to, to convert this. We said that Grant was an explosive player. That gives you some sense of how he stays engaged in the game. The old tip drill. Holton Hill thought he had a pick, and it turned into six the other way. And Jay Jackson will let that one go through the end zone. And other, other than the ball not being near the ground, the first thing that entered my mind was, gosh, <laughs> not since Pittsburgh and the Raiders and Jack Tatum's hit did we see anything quite like this. Well, again, it was a tremendous job by Lauderdale, understanding <laughs> the context of the situation, trying to jar that ball out of there. And, well, Grant paying it off. He caught the ball, too. Did you see the nose of the football headed down? I mean, he caught that on the tip of the ball as it was going downward. His, I mean, with the execution and the alertness there, you know, sometimes you have some divine intervention, but you also have to have the ability to make the play. Well, I told you in the open that sometimes I've been watching the film, I like to watch Grant when the ball's not in his hands, and it's what he's doing to put himself in a position to make plays. Warren in the backfield, and he takes it towards the short side of the field, stopped by Nigel Bethel. Chris Warren, young man from Rockwell, Texas, true freshman. Ahead for four, second down and six. He is a big, strong back. He would be really the similar back that uh, maybe Deontay For Dante Foreman would be. And Kirk Jackson, a little more like Jonathan Gray. Braden Fajoko with the stop as it gets out ahead to the 32-yard line. I think one of the things that Jay Novell, the play caller for the Texas Longhorns, has got to understand, now it's not anything that they've done from an offensive standpoint. This was just a mistake. Why you've got the, the opponent with six points on the scoreboard, Jay has got to stay aggressive now by their standards. Pick over the offense. Three games there. There's another great defensive play. Heard stopped behind the line. J.J. Gaines, the senior from Irving, Texas. J.J. Games on a beeline trying to make a great play, a negative play to get this team leveraging that touchdown that came the way that it did. You can see him driving on it. Did a fantastic job of finishing and closing at the point of attack and gets that helmet. The only thing he could have done better is put his hand in front of the thighs as opposed to behind him. But nevertheless, great open field tackle by J.J. Games. And the flag comes down. We may have too many men on the field. Substitution issue here. Illegal substitution on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. And Gerard Hurd having a conversation along the 
Texas sidelines. This will back them up and Dixon will boot it away just past his five yard line. Cameron Batson is back deep. Standing around his 40. High, spiraling punt. Batson, actually that's a different receiver back there that takes that one in. Cutie, 82, a reserve wide receiver. Bear catch after a 50-yard boot. Well, Spencer, who is on your Nissan Heisman watch this week? Well, Derrick Henry's up at the top, and he's going to break Trent Richardson's record for touchdowns this season with 21. Baker Mayfield scooting in there. Then Deshaun Watson has done a fine job with Clemson, trying to harken them back to the days of Danny Ford and company back in the early 80s, bringing up championships. Got a lesson in how valuable he is upon... His injury last week. Mayfield means a lot to that Sooner team, doesn't he? He really does. The second half is just like watching two different games. Well, that was a very strange-looking play where the right side of the Texas Tech front line did not move at all. And watch the back here. They don't move either. <laughs> it's amazing. As the ball was snapped and there was nothing he could do, Castor just let it go. Well, DeAndre Washington had a, it was a screen call is what it was, and he was doing a tremendous job of not spoiling the play in movement. I understood what his head was. Second and ten. Here's Grant taking a little wide receiver screen. Markers fly back at the 32-yard line. Thrown in an area where holding would be a potential call. You know, a lot of times, Tim, on that previous play, when you know that there's an infraction, if you've got a slip play call like a screen, you don't blow the play away. In other words, if the coach wants to keep in his back pocket and reprise it, he could. An illegal block in the back by number six of the offense. The 10-yard penalty in replay second down. Lauderdale's gotten so physical now, he's decided to throw a few <laughs> when he shouldn't. And is tagged with that illegal block, and that will back him up. Well, he touched on Texas Tech's issues on the road. Uh, their first scoreless quarter for Texas Tech all year. Now, they only had three, you might recall, in that game in Kansas. Yep that we had earlier in the season and uh, but since then average 17 in every other first quarter so in every other game they had nine of them all told they had 17 at least on average second and 20. Mahomes trying to get away from pressure dumps it underneath to Stockton and he spun down at the 37 yard line and when you look at Mahomes, he's uh, a bit different when he's on the road versus in the friendly confines in Lubbock. But he can create, Tim, when he pulls the ball down. We've described his style as kind of like jazz. He starts off with a particular lift and then does a lot of different things in the middle, but hopefully ends up with something predictable like a score on the other end. They'll call his number, but not nearly as much as sweeps a couple. Third and five. Against the empty backfield, here comes pressure. Loops it out. Dangerous pass could have been picked. Devontae Davis was in great position defending Reginald Davis and the punt formation coming up for the Red Raiders. Bryce Cottrell and company putting pressure on Mahomes. They're driving him away and did a tremendous job in terms of play calling for Vance Bedford putting pressure affected the quarterback much like they did Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma. This is one of the successful formulas against these mobile quarterbacks that disrupts this kind of instances of an air raid, but it looks more like a run and shoot concept with these smallest wide receivers, Jim. And you saw Gerard Hurd there on his way to the locker room, it appeared, being tended to. That's why that conversation was taking place. So Hurd must have gotten dinged up as DeJay Johnson takes that one while sliding down at the 19-yard line. 43-yard boot. That means Swoops will be called upon to punt up to quarterback after that punt. Defense is leading the way early on, but a 7-3 tech lead. Seven to three, our score, Texas Tech with the lead. 11-28 remaining. And the rash of injuries at the quarterback position in the Big 12 and around the country continues. Now Swoops is in the game. Gerard heard when he was getting some attempt, uh, some uh, attention along the sidelines. Clearly, was hurt. There's Burt running a fly, and it's incomplete. So he has left the game, and that means it might be Swoops's game. We're trying to effort information on what the injury was. He was sacked on a play just prior to coming out of the 
series, but we're not sure if that's, in, in fact, when he got hurt. But he has been taken to the locker room, and that means the former starter, Tyrone Swoops, is in there. Known more, obviously, for being the 18-wheeler in the red zone. Second and ten. Tags down, and Swoops takes the seat. Back at the 16-yard line. Probably going to be holding in that interior line and five wide looks trying to get Swoops out of there. Holding by number 74 of the offense. The penalty, penalty declined. It's third down. Taylor Doyle getting yes. caught on that one, too. Wow. They've lost three starters so far, and Malik Jefferson now being wow, that's attended to. That's their best defender. Well, he's the best athlete on this team, in my opinion. And, and given where this program is right now, searching for identity and then talking to the play caller, Jay Norvell, yesterday, they work in concert with the defense, and they're nowhere near being able to endure the loss of Jefferson on the defensive side of the ball and keep their offensive game plan intact. Third and ten for Swoops. He airmails this one long and just beyond the outstretched arms of Lorenzo Joe, the sophomore from Abilene. Swoops would love to have that one back. Because he was absolutely right there. Take a look at Tristan Mok Mickelson 75's reaction after that missed opportunity. <laughs> He's thinking, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that looked like it was right there, didn't it? He could have caught that. <laughs> Fourth down and punt formation again for Michael Dixon. Fourth and 12. Get away, get away is the shout. Coming from Batson. And it will uh, rest out of bounds inside the 40, a 46-yard punt. College football's rivalry weekend will continue tomorrow, starting with a game that will decide Conference USA's East Division as Marshall battles Western Kentucky. And then it's a pair of Pac-12 battles between bitter in-state rivals. It's all tomorrow, only on FS1. Got the Apple Cup. Go along with Oregon and Oregon State. They're evaluating, we're told, from the Texas conglomerate that they're evaluating for a potential head injury with Gerard Hurd. And anytime you get that message, it usually means the game belongs to somebody else. Mahomes under pressure decides to tuck it. And he'll be knocked out of bounds right at midfield by Nashawn Hughes, number 40. Excellent job by Holmes doing a job of escaping the opposite of the pressure. Versus a three-wide formation, he went the opposite direction when he escaped to the short side of the field, found a void, Texas lost contain, and he exploited it. We haven't heard much from DeAndre Washington tonight, have we? No, we haven't. But either on the ground or as a pass receiver. Zero for him. He's got nothing in terms of net yardage. Run option to him here. Let's see if they can spin. Inside the 45 to the 44-yard line goes DeAndre. Duke Thomas came up and tried to put a helmet on him, but I tell you, Washington is a very powerful and deceptive runner. He's got speed, and we know that he's elusive, but he does finish his runs, Timmy, so you better come meaning business when you try to bring him on. From the 44-yard line. Nice yeah. yeah, boy, right as you diagrammed it. That's what he can do. And he can be silenced for a quarter and a half, and DeAndre's that good. The senior from Missouri City, Texas. He is sudden in his style, Tim, and once he finds that, he does plant, and the, as the cliche goes, he puts his foot in the ground, and he's off to the races. But that instinct, there's no way you can replace that. Boy, he's like a lit fuse racing to a point to explode when he gets that ball in his hand. Well, now Hughes is slow to get up. You know you're getting close to the end of the year when this pops up. By the way, Texas Tech had played 10 games in a row before they got what, in essence, was a bye week, but even then it was a short bye week after the victory they had against Kansas State. You know, I don't know that the average fan understands what it takes out of a football team to play nine, ten games in succession, but it, it, it yeah. does take a lot. It's a lot, Tim, and I know we're in this kind of basketball on grass era, but when you're playing aggressive styles of defense that in these spread leagues you have to to affect the quarterback, otherwise he'll crush you, Vance Bedford's his team is beat up defensively. First and ten from the 30 for Mahomes. Going for the fade to the corner. Reginald Davis was the intended receiver. A very active Dylan Haynes was back there. 
I love Devontae Davis coming over there and closing and getting in position to, to create a kind of a tandem look. You can see he's playing a, a soft catch coverage. He knows he has help over the top, so he's squeezing that sideline, and his safety comes over to help him out. Dylan Haynes tag-teaming him for the denial. Haynes and Davis collaborating. Second and ten. Mahomes 10 of 17, 168. There's the pressure and another sack back at the 35-yard line. Timothy Cole in his linebacker position really played a nice run fit scenario there. Defense plays with integrity. That means each one is in their gap playing responsibility. Vance Bedford's team is playing solid defense tonight. Cottrell and Boyette combined on that four-yard sack. You see Texas where they are in terms of getting them. It's a solid front seven. It's man coverage. You got a one run. And that pass thrown at the feet of Ian Sadler. It was there, the shallow cross, but there was a lot of pressure up the gun right at Mahomes. Yeah, John Barney is on the back end in a trail technique and had the ball been on the mark. Straight man coverage. Somebody's going to come open. And a lot of islands of excellence out there, you hope, on the defensive side of the ball, but there's a matchup that they believe they can win. Otherwise, they're not going to empty the formation. This would be the longest field goal for Hatfield. 51 yards. He has one between 40 and 49 this year. Boy, he feels really good about it. And he should. So the Red Raiders extend their lead with 8.25 remaining in the second quarter. It's a pretty good job by Cameron Batson, the holder, as he got that high snap from Brenner, 46, the long snapper, especially in these conditions. It's wet out there. It is. Uh, Tim, I think the story of this game so far from Texas Tech's standpoint as Cliff Kingsbury looks on is he's relied on an offense that had to become like a defense with Akeem Grant being heads up and catching that one ball and scoring. That was essentially a defensive effort. And then the kicking game stepping up to helping them stay in front of this one against the Longhorns on the road. Our only touchdown. Came on a play that um, back at Fox Sports Live, they've been talking about the one. It could be That's the right. one for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Our guys Jay and Dan back in Los Angeles. It turned out to be the closest thing to the immaculate reception I've seen in college football. Touchdown catch to Jakeem Grant. The Jay Johnson is back deep in a steady rain. He'll take it from his three. And he, has, he just lost his footing at the 15-yard line there. The incredible rivalry going back to the old Southwest Conference days. <laughs> Years ago, old pal Spike Dykes was involved in a lot of them. Daryl Royal, of course, the man for whom this stadium is named. Something special about coming here. And, you know, Bebo passed away. They have a picture of Bebo, Bebo now in the end zone. There he is. We pay our respects to the original Bebo. You know, the Longhorn was originally bred for long, tough winters, and that's what it's been for the Texas Longhorns so far. All suitors had to read up on that. That's right. He did. Yeah. yeah. Here's Warren ahead to the 18-yard line. Devontae Hinton made the stop. By the way, we had to point this out many times. Matt Brown, who won a national championship with Vince Young back here, played for another in 2009. He was once uh, your offensive coordinator yeah. in Oklahoma. Matt came and got us on track and put in that eye formation so that Marcus Dupree and myself could do a little something, something. <laughs> Matt's a great mind, man. Second and eight. Looking long on a streak route down the sidelines. Marcus Johnson had it. Lost it. Buffalo, I think, may have come away with it. He did. Well, I thought Johnson had a beat on it, and then Bethel just ripped it away. Bethel considered that a 50-50 ball, Tim. That's just as yeah. much mine as it is yours. And he came down with it with intention. Outstanding defensive effort by Nigel Bethel. Second in the nation at the point score, and you can see nice protection, so nothing there. It's just a 50 50 ball that not just is a little underthrown. Oh, That's part yeah. of it again. Yeah, I really thought Marcus Johnson had it at first, and then as they roll down, Bethel 
Picked it up, had it inside. That's just great technique, isn't it? It's great technique and great position and great fight and finish. Because, yeah. again, Johnson did have that ball in his possession. Bethel just stole it away from him. That old saying about want to, right? Yes, sir. Got to have it. On first and ten, DeAndre Washington. How about that that's stop nice. and go? How about that? We're in a phone booth, too. I mean, that's the kind of move right there that you don't see a lot of because everybody is so fast these days, particularly against these spread attacks. You've got hybrid guys playing in the linebacker position that run and chase well, but to have that kind of ability to stop in space and, and recalibrate and get more yards, that's outstanding. From the 47, second and two. They go with a power formation. Washington carries it right up the gap. Inside the 45 to the 43 of Texas. John Bonney coming up from the nickelbacker position to aid on that tackle. There we see the rushing leaders and boy, DeAndre Washington. You think about it, about 40% of the plays actually called by Cliff Kingsbury are designed to go to him. And to have those kinds of numbers is pretty incredible. Play fake, Mahomes. He decides to take it and usher himself out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Yeah, but those big heavies out there, you can see the direction here. And then you can go anywhere you want to go, big fella. You want to go to the left? Absolutely. Stay away from that crashing safety that's coming down on the linebackers and Washington's instincts take over. But the offensive line paved the way. People wonder why they have those wide gaps. Well, it, it becomes such a factor in large measure because they're forcing you to defend the width of the field, too. And that pass is thrown underneath, incomplete for Sadler. Yeah, you touch on that often. Dylan Hayes was there covering Spencer. How, you know, if you force people to, to cover the width, then you're going to get some gaps in your run game. Absolutely. And again, the more you stress the perimeter and the boundary, guys don't want to get hooked and they start inching out there a little bit more. And the tackle saying, go ahead, get on out there. That, that means if we go inside, you're going to have to go that much further to stop our running back. Third down seven. Blitz up the middle. Wide open water now. Dropped it. Wow. It was thrown to the back shoulder a bit. But he certainly had time and maybe was just a little too wide open. Well, the ball's up in the air. The rain's coming down. And Lauderdale over the shoulder was going to be a very difficult catch to make, to be sure. But Bonnie there, the cornerback, number 24 in his hip pocket. Didn't have to work hard, but he's got to explain how he got behind him in the first place. Well, without his uh, big-time hit, Texas Tech wouldn't have the touchdown that they had with Jakeem Grant. But he could not reel that one in. But Jay Johnson back deep. Samant goes with the end-over-end -end pooch variety punt. And it is handled inside the 10-yard line at the end by Dodger Johnson. Lauderdale. It is still slippery when it's wet. All right, Rob, thank you. We look forward to that. Uh, Wadi will be in there with Matt Leonard and Rob. Chris Warren is in the backfield for Texas as they begin play inside their 10 yard line. Boy, bouncing off tackle after tackle. Look at the kick from Rob Wando. Look at him go. Ninety-one yards. We do have a flag after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting by number three of the offense. It's his first unsportsmanlike of the game. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Armani Foreman celebrating a little too much, but guess what? That was worthy of some celebration. How about that? He broke. Three big-time tackles there. You know, David Gibbs uh, just watched him, and he's trying to get a beat on exactly what happened. But Charlie Strong knows the book on Texas Tech. The Red Raiders can put up points, but they cannot stop the run. The Texas coaches told us they know that's the case. So they, until that play, only had 43 yards rushing, Timmy, <laughs> until that explosive play. That's the difference. Now, they had a total of 58 total yards, Texas, prior to that 91-yard run. 
Rose hooks the extra point right through the left upright. Yards after contact. Wow. Reach, and you will be punished. That happened to Tech. Spencer, I want you to take a look at how many times he did get hit, and in fact, he got hit originally behind the line of scrimmage. Well, he's a five-star player for a reason. You can see the initial hit, the miss. He runs through three. That's three. Four try and miss. Two more is going to come from the other side. That's five, six, and technically seven. If you count the last one ring of the dove after that was J.J. Gaines. He put them all in his hip pocket, Tim, and he went off to the races. Talk about a true freshman stepping up big time. His first career touchdown comes, and it's a big one. Dakota Allen had a shot. Braden Fajoko, though, is probably the best interior lineman, the freshman from Honolulu for David Gibbs, and he hit him behind the line of scrimmage, and he took off. Here's the kick, and Grant's got a couple of them for touchdowns. He's on the loose again, as it out to the 47-yard line. And with more on injuries, let's go down to Bruce Feldman. Bruce. Hey, hey, Tim, as much as the good news for Texas, some bad news here. Gerard Hurd, starting quarterback, he's out for the game as he gets evaluated for a head injury. And Malik Jefferson, their best player on defense, he is out for the game with a left ankle injury. Oh, well, really unfortunate for the Horns as they really are becoming a mash unit on the defensive side of the ball. And without Hurd, you can... Pretty much bet we're going to see a lot of off-tackle runs from these freshman running backs, Spencer. Well, again, with that, that was encouraging, the big run that we just had by Warren there, and it's outstanding. But when you lose a key player in defense and offense, Tim, that's a lot to overcome for Texas. All right, they go with the screen, but it's thrown behind Justin Stockton, incomplete. I mean, Malik Jefferson was the best player in the nation. I mean, he was an elite linebacker, to be sure, but everybody was salivating him. And Cliff Kingsbury, I mean, he probably doesn't know is, is so engaged on the offense and what's happening, but they just caught themselves a break there because Texas is without one of the most prolific players, albeit young, at that position in the nation. Second and ten. I know how you love those short, choppy steps by backs <laughs> like DeAndre. Anthony Wheeler made the stop, but there were a lot of guys tackling here that time for the Horns. Just sidled the wide out position, had a chance to actually block someone, and he pulled off, which was a heads-up play because he definitely would have got called for a block in the back. So Texas Tech receivers fully engaged, trying to move down the field cleanly. Third down two. Lauderdale has to get off the field. And we got a flag coming down. That's going to be a substitution issue, I believe. Eric Morris from the sideline for Tech was trying to get his guys off the field. He was jumping up and down. Illegal substitution by the offense. They were throwing the players in. It's a five-yard penalty. It's still third down. Mane in position to make a move on Washington, but you can see the double move, watching the head fake and the shift. It's all about making plays. He goes outside and he just whiffs. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Washington is a bad boy. Third and seven after the penalty. The beauty of that play was just a three-man rush. Vance Bedford decided to drop back in coverage and confuse Mahomes. Mission accomplished. Three men staying engaged. The pressure is coming from the outside, coming from here. Not a lot of bodies, but the fact that you're able to do it with just three means you've got a lot, a lot of burnt orange jerseys on the back end to navigate if you're a quarterback. Taylor Samate will punt it away. DeJay Johnson back deep for Texas. Yes, he did. Johnson from the 15 stopped immediately. 36-yard boot. Kevin Madison was there to make the stop. Well, we touched on the college football playoff rankings. Who, who gained a lot? 
who uh, got the job done. The Sooners in the most critical spot, and of course, Michigan State with that win against the Buckeyes. I'm really glad, and again, it sounds like I'm a homer, but I, I, look, I try to be critical, and a lot of people think I've been overly critical of the Sooners, but I'm glad that that panel did not devalue that win over TCU, who was without Boykin and without their, their top wide receiver. To me, you win the ones that's on your schedule, that's just part of the game. Outstanding job uh, of coaching that Bob Stoops has done. First of all, getting Lincoln Riley in there as offensive coordinator, made some changes on the defensive side, moving Mike upstairs. I think all of that really helped this ball club get to the position they're in now. First and 10 from the 16. Swoops in for the injured Gerard Hurd. They're taking a look at his head in the locker room as Swoops gets away from trouble and navigates to about the 19. Devontae Hinton bringing him down, and we've got a late flag. There's a late flag, but Dakota Allen was coming on a little delay blitz, and he barely got away from him, Tim. As they sort this out, they've got to find a way to make sure that they're shoring up those gaps, either that or move the quarterback out of harm's way. A personal foul, clipping by number 72 of the offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal and replay first down. That's a red shirt freshman, Elijah Rodriguez, 72, a roll block. Let's see if we can get this right here. Again, you got to be careful when you get a guy over the top. He rolled him up. That was the, the infraction. It wasn't that he hit him. He hit him high, and which was legal, above the waist. But when he continued to roll him up and he turned his back at that point in time, even though it's not happening in the interior line, it is still a chop line. After the penalty, they go inside the one. It is not quite to the 10, so nothing doing at the line of scrimmage for Texas this time. Tim, you usually see that play. Usually you're thinking in the interior line, the guy's got to be engaged before they'll call that. But again, for safety purposes, you'll get called for that in open space when you roll the guy up. Well, that will be a lot of fun on Saturday. Gus and Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath will have it for you. Check your Fox affiliate. Stanford and Notre Dame. Second and 15. Got him open. Yes, he does. That's Jackson. And a late flag comes down on Tevin Madison. <laughs> Be interesting to see if it's offensive pass interference rather than defensive pass interference. Generally speaking, it does go against the defense, but we'll see. Pass interference by number 20 of the defense. Yeah. It's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first pick. Every time you're in those 50-50 situations, it almost always goes against the D. Well, what made it difficult, the ball was underthrown. Johnson was wide open and not enough mustard on that ball to throw him open. And that well, I thought compounded he, the issue. I, I thought Madison turned his head beautifully uh, at uh, the end. I really did. I, I agree. I, I think he was trying to locate the ball at that point. If I'm an official, yeah. I'm saying you got just as much right to that ball as he does at that point. Now, that's one of the things I think in the offseason the rules committee has got to take a good look at. What constitutes... Offensive pass interference versus defensive pass interference. Up. Swoops decides to dump it underneath and does to the fullback. Ball is on the ground. That's blue at the tight end. Eight's back that had it and lost it as he hit the ground. We'll see if coming away with it was Ja'Shawn Johnson. If, in fact, Texas Tech got possession of the ball or if he's down at contact. A lot to sort out on that play, but what made it possible was Chris Warren stepping up and making a tremendous block, but again, we've got to sort out who has it. We've got a flag down, too. Really impressed with Chris Warren as they sort this out. The, the big run that he had and then the block on that last play with leaking pressure coming by Texas Tech trying to affect this Longhorn offense. This is a big play, big call it is, here. It's huge. The ruling on the field is a caught forward pass. The previous play is under further review. I don't know why would they be debating whether it was caught. I thought maybe the ball got loose when it hit the ground. It was clearly caught. Uh, Jim Blackwood, our replay official, along with D. Anderson taking a look at it. Well, you can see Warren, boy, step up in there, put his nose in there, make a play. All right, that's caught. That's a caught pass, yeah. and so is it a... And the ball's loose yeah. there. Yeah. That looks like fumble to me. And uh, Texas Tech ball. Yeah, I think if you, you, you want to declare it's a caught pass for the purposes of saying it's a fumble, because if it was incomplete and not caught, well, it then, can't be a fumble. Well, then Robertson, who knocked it away. It's a fumble. It's a fumble, and it should be Texas Tech's football. 
I think what the official was saying is one is going to begat the other or negate it. If it's not a completion, then it can't be a fumble. I thought Jashon Johnson eventually got on top of it. Yep. And and he caught the ball, that's clear, and then therefore it was coming out, that's a fumble. Yeah. But again, our referee, Cooper Castleberry, did not indicate that possession had changed. Therefore, we have some speculation here. Well, I, I would suspect that there's a lot of changing about ready to happen if I were <laughs> away from the man. All right, he's clearly caught it, made two steps with it. He's hit pretty hard. But the ball is loose. Bethel misses it. Ja'Shawn Johnson, seven, winds up along with J.J. Gaines on top of it. And the official, the umpire, is saying down by contact. Wow. That's a down wow. by contact call that he is giving. Mm. Which, I mean, he's not on the ground. There's a defender underneath Blewett. Yeah. So he technically was not on the field of play down when the ball came loose. Well, I'm, I wish Mike were here for this, but I want to tell you, I'm going to do a bad Mike Pereira impersonation, but that is not down by contact. That no. ball, it should be Tex ball. Yes, it should. And Blewett knows it. But he may get a break here. Mm. <laughs> He's hoping he didn't blow it. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was waiting for you and all the other guys here in the booth. Brett Bender, <laughs> our spotter, statistician Scott Alexander, everybody weighing in here. As I quicker, said, this man. is a very big moment. Late stages of the quarter. Possession could, probably should change. Texas Tech should have possession of the football if what we're suggesting is in fact true. Just because he gave the down by contact signal doesn't mean that it is. That's why the replay that's why officials. They review it. That's why they review it. And uh, these guys After do a good job. Review, the pass was caught and fumbled and recovered by the defense. The foul for an ineligible receiver is declined. It's first down. Well, he knew it, and so did we. Mm -hmm. Texas Tech gets it after the turnover. That's a win for the officials, too, because that's what replay is for, to get it right. If they got it wrong real time. Now, so, Blewett's got to shake it off and get back in the get his head back in the game. Yeah, you know, they've lost some playmakers, yep. Texas has. And they've gotten uh, their biggest play ever from a freshman from Rockwell, Texas, Chris Warren, to tie this game at 10. Let's see if their defense can stick them here. DeAndre Washington. He's got a first down to the 20-yard line. 14-yard pickup. Well, it's bummed out, and man, but he's got to get his head back the in the defense. game because this Texas Tech team now has sent some blood. Declined. They're driving right now. Feel like they've got the Longhorns in a bit of a funk. Stretch plays. Two receivers to the wide side now, Tim. Sadler was in the slot up at the top of your screen. Washington slips on the cut. May have gotten a yard from the original line of scrimmage. Second and nine coming up. One of the rare occasions where you see Washington make a mistake and make an inside cut on his inside leg, trying to go the opposite direction. The physics don't work for you there, but that's one of those rare mistakes. You got a nice little tandem trail here. We'll see how they run this route. Let's see which one of the two. The safety is in a bind if he has to cover number 11. That's to King Grant. Mahomes looking, he decides to run it. Inside the five, down to the three, first and goal. And he is talking some trash. Well, Duke Thomas and company, number 21, have got to really bow their shoulders. And again, they're getting bounced around there on the back end. Texas Tech using their speed. Twins formation up at the top. Let's see what they work here. They probably wanted that a minute ago. Washington stopped at the one. Good defensive work by Timothy Cole, the junior. From that linebacker position, making the stop. Second and goal. And we've got another injured Longhorn. Is that Ridgeway? I believe it is. Boy, oh boy, they lost Hughes. Now here's Ridgeway. Malik Jefferson's gone out of the game. He's done for the night. Hassan Ridgeway, you talk about a pocket pusher or a guy that can play inside or outside in a five or three technique. They can ill afford to lose him. Yeah. Been a rough night for the home team trying to keep guys on the field.
You know, this is a really good front seven for Texas, but because of some of the guys lost in the early regime of Charlie Strong, you know, he had to run a lot of guys out of here. But Jim Johnson was one of the guys that had to earn his way back on the team. Yes. They, they do lack depth. This team lacks depth as a result. They really do, and Charlie's out on that field. Oh, Scurdy, he's going back off of it. He cares for all of his guys, but he knows how integral that guy in the middle is. So can you go, Mahomes? Touchdown! Yeah, he's enjoying it, too. <laughs> Beware of muscle flexors that could get you a little yellow hanky it really could <laughs> and he did it right in front of the official too love the design of the play off of a speed sweep action you get guys kind of focusing and think look at that guy running the opposite direction mahomes pulls it down <laughs> pretty good hit by uh the andre washington he can run he can block he can do it all ran right into duke thomas oh, extra point just gets through it was nearly blocked. Kingsbury talking to him about the uh, muscle flexion. 17 to 10 with a minute 48 remaining in the second quarter. You know, the it factor does come into play, does it not? With Patrick Mahomes, he's got it. Whatever it is, he's got it. Yeah, he, he's orchestrating the offense, but he has help along the way. And again, we'll get a chance to see some of that help. It's one of those opportunities where the backs have to step up as well, and Mahomes is the guy, but he's got a lot of supporting cast helping him along the way. Johnson is back deep awaiting the kick. It's been a steady rain since midway through the first quarter. Johnson from the goal line. Hammered back at the 15-yard line, so I'm guessing... Uh, some of that supporting cast is uh, including number 21. Yeah, you can see him slip through here on the screen, and he filters out and realizes it's not going to come to him, so he becomes a blocker. Downfield, giving Mahomes just enough opportunity to get the extra yards and put him in position to get the touchdown. And here's he paying it off right here. Watch him navigate and then put his helmet on the shoulder on the outside there to kick out block and give Mahomes the end zone. Uh, when you look at a running back, Timmy, it's what they do when the ball's not in their hand that really, for me, determines whether or not you're a complete player at that position. Everybody knows you can run. They, you've got the ability to make people miss and all of that. But what do you do when the ball's not in your hands? Yeah, he's bringing back memories of Byron Hansford and the old Red Raider, the, the Red Raider that was their Ricky Williams back in the day. Mighty might. It's Chris Warren takes that little flare pattern. Gets it out for nine yards. Setting up second and short. Justice Nelson, nice job of him stepping up and saving that one because Warren's already shown tonight that he can take it the distance. Just one man away if he kept his foot on that one. Be interesting to see how aggressive Texas is here with all three timeouts remaining and swoops in at quarterback. He's got it. Keep over the middle. It's overthrown and nearly picked off. Justice Nelson, number 31, had it in his sights. That ball sailed and intended for Andrew Beck, 47, the tight end. Yeah, Andrew Beck has got to be careful because when he goes into that zone type look, he's got to not keep his head back. You can see, look at all this voided area right here. That was a well-thrown ball, but he's looking for it and he takes his eyes off of it. Go contest that ball and make it and claim it as your own. You may draw the penalty along, along the way. Beck has got to do a better job of remaining committed to that ball. That's his. Third down, a yard to go. Warren is the setback. He gets it, flags down, and he's close to a first down. Pete Robertson made the stop, but as I said, we have a flag down on the field. Thrown in an area where we could see holding or some reasonable facts. Yeah, there are. Personal foul, a chop block by number 75 and 74 of the offense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal and replay third down. So, again, Mickelson, 75, starting at right tackle for Vahe. Well, you can see this spot right here is where the infraction is going to come. He comes down yep. and just puts that helmet right in the knee. And that's just one of those deals where offensive and defensive linemen don't like that stuff, man. It's, it's nasty down there enough. When you start going low in the knees, you take umbrage of that. So fourth down, Texas Tech now wants to have some more time to work with. As after they were at second and one, they could not get that yard, and that means the Red Raiders will get the ball again. Well, coming up on the State Farm Halftime with Rob Stone, Dave Wanstead, and Matt Leinert, the playoff push is underway for the Irish. 
We'll get Matt's top Heisman candidates. I heard uh, both Matt and, and Wani talking about this game and how they saw it. Usually, Wanstad thinks a high-scoring game is in the upper 20s. <laughs> and we might get that well, because of what, the conditions that we have here. That's what tonight. the game plan is. I guarantee you that's what Texas won. And for the most part, they, they're, they're within that because this is a team that averages over 42 points a game. Timmy, they kept them in check. One of those touchdowns is a defensive effort, essentially. Yeah, Dixon got all of that. And it will be down at the 27-yard line, a 49-yard boot. But, you know, that much time left for Texas Tech. Look out. Two timeouts remaining for them to work with. And then, listen, everybody, you can talk all you want about Texas travails of late, but it's still Texas. It looks good in the brochure the next year, no matter what their record is. And it's been a long time. He won a couple of times, Kingsbury did, in the rivalry, but never here. So as a head coach... He wants this as badly as his team does, while the Longhorns appear to be somewhat vulnerable. Yeah, they really do. And again, Tim, I look for those seminal moments in series like this where if you've done something you've never done before, like when in the last seven chances they've failed when they've come here to Darrell K. Royal Stadium, that's what you can recruit with. All right, Washington will take it. He was trying to get out of bounds, but stumbled. Clock winding. Duke Thomas makes the stop. And uh, they are in a hurry. They're looking to get lined up and snap it, but they don't want to use the timeout just yet. Second and three after the gain of seven. The game is six. Seven is four. And it's going to be the option on the read. Mahomes decides to take it up and on his own at the 42-yard line with 21 seconds left. The fact that he's running out of bounds, he's going to try to get as much as he can. And Cliff Kingsbury never going to leave plays on the carpet. I guarantee you, if there's time on the clock, he's going to take a shot. Empty with three wides to the bottom of your screen, and that's Cameron Batson in motion. Wide receiver screen to Lauderdale. And he is dumped at the 47-yard line by Holton Hill, and now they'll use one of those two timeouts. I don't think there's any denying that conditions have been an issue tonight. Perhaps playing in the favor of the Longhorns, more of a downhill team relying on the ground game. And guys trying to get their feet settled underneath the ball to field it, overrunning it. You can see Washington usually sure foot. The wet conditions obviously impacting his ability to cut back against the grain. So the elements of factor tonight, for sure. Those 50-50 balls are uh, really just that, maybe even more than 50-50 when you're trying to catch a ball at, at full extension. We've seen a few of those won by the defense rather than the offense as well. Well, the, the decider is that both of them have to play in the condition, so they've got to find a way to mitigate it and play well in spite of it. Second and five, Mahomes. Well, he's he's to take out of bounds, a yard shy of the first down. And Shiro Davis really, you know, kind of voided that area on that outside of his defensive end position and allowed him to get to the perimeter. They're oh. down in a yard to go. They still have the timeout remaining, and obviously they've kept that with the hopes that they could get into field goal position. What do you think? You think they try to get something oh, deep? Or yeah. they go 10 or 15 no yards? No question. Here. They've got four wides here against a single safety. They've got three over the top to the field. It's going to be tough. There it is, over the middle, and caught. That's a first down. Clock stops, and they have the one timeout remaining with three seconds left. And that gives them an easier opportunity to get it to the end zone. Yes. Uh, determination more than likely would be that a really, really long field goal. They've got a 51-yarder tonight. They can contemplate it, but I would think probably this is outside the length for Clayton Hatfield. Yeah, it is outside his length. And again, Cliff's going to bring his guys in and probably find a way to take a shot downfield on that last play. Sadler just set it down between zones after a 1-2-3 check down. No throw away, but that's about all he had in terms of the quarterback, Mahomes. They wanted to conserve the timeout for the potential of a field goal, and in so doing, those first two plays, Spencer, took a lot of time. It really did, Tim. And, and again, the way this game has gone, for the most part, they've not been able to wield the type of offense that typically defines what they do. So 
It's tough to get a rhythm as a play caller. All right, three up at the top, and Mahomes is going to look to get it all the way down there. Oh, it's a beautiful. The ball is going to be ruled a fumble because uh, Shiro Davis knocked it away, and then it rested into Hassan Ridgeway's arms. So it ends with a turnover. But we are at halftime. Texas Tech and Texas putting on quite a show on this Thanksgiving evening. It's halftime here in Austin. Sixth Street, the Austin band, Reckless Kelly bringing us back from halftime here at Texas and college football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. We have been rocking out with Thanksgiving here at halftime. Jimmy May Vaughn putting on a show. 17-10 hour score here. Texas Tech getting the job done with Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando. Hope you're enjoying our Thanksgiving feast here on FS1. Well, Texas Tech's had the passing game taken away. Jakeem Grant has been stymied, yeah. with the exception of a ricochet. Yeah. But the ground game has bailed them out, hasn't it? Andre Washington, DeAndre has done the job. Over 100 yards rushing in this half, um, this half of this ball game. And what it was for me, it was going back to something they learned from earlier this year when they lost on the road to West Virginia. That tandem of backs put together 277 yards rushing. But it's like, hey, that's my old friend Dana Holgers. Let's take a page from their playbook. Washington, give it to him on the ground. Mahomes did his fair part as well. Together, they put together a first half and now have a comfortable lead. And navigating through the slippery when it's wet <laughs> sidelines, our own Bruce Feldman has more here at that time. Tim, I talked to Charlie Strong coming off the field, and he was really frustrated, not by the injuries, but he said, we just keep shooting ourselves in the foot with all these penalties. we got to play smarter in the second half. Cliff Kingsbury was reasonably happy with how his team was playing, especially on defense, but he said, you know, we're one for eight on third downs. Pat's been a little off. If we play clean in the second half, we're going to win this game. It looks as though he got in an argument at halftime with dinner. Somewhere at dinner, yes, sir. Bruce had some, an argument. Someone, someone threw a libation on him there. Hang in there, Bruce. We love you. As we open the second half, remember, Texas deferred, so they get the ball to open the, the half, and DeJay Johnson will take it from his one. Almost popped it. Knocked down at the 25-yard line, tripped up by J.J. Gaines. Some of the best players, they put them on special teams these days, and J.J. Gaines, well, that was a nice shoestring tackle there. Remember, Swoops forced into the position because of the injury to Gerard Hurd. It was his head that they had to take a look at. This was reduced to some extent what Jay Norvell can do. But in terms of throwing the deep ball, Swoops is actually better than Gerard Hurd in that area. He's got a bigger arm from that standpoint. But again, I think you've got to do it just to keep them honest and let them know that you will go over the top if you start crowding the box. First and ten, play fake. Here it comes. Plenty of time. On the curl, it's Burke. He comes back to the ball to the 33-yard line. And we talked about those injuries. And it has really become a problem. Those are two of their best defensive players, Jenkins and Malik Jefferson. He is their best. Luda Ford also with a head injury. He's out. Kirk Johnson had the great run. He's got the leg problem, too. Warren is back in the game for Kirk. And they'll take it on the stretch play. Cuts it back up. Has a first down. Out to the 48-yard line. That touchdown run, fourth longest in school history, was a thing of beauty. It was a thing of beauty, Tim. He showed you with pad level. And again, you talk about yards after contact. Warren, the true freshman, shows you how to do it. He's running with intention, helping for election, in for the score. Outstanding. Up the middle, Warren again. This time stopped at a lot of scrimmage. They were ready for him this time for Hoko, among others. Leading the charge, along with Malik Jenkins, number 41 for Texas Tech. That's the longest for a freshman running back. And look at that, fourth longest all time. Young man, when you hit the record books here, you're going to be heard from for quite some time. A lot of great backs come through here. Obviously, Earl Campbell and Tyler Rose. 
fantastic runners. Take Texas. even back further to Jim Bertelson back in the day. <laughs> Swoops lets it fly and complete. Intended for Dajay Johnson. Tevin Madison did a nice job of batting that one away. Dajay was there, had a step, but the pass was a little underthrown. With more on Warren, let's go back down to Bruce. Tim, I talked to some of the tech staff before, and they were like, Chris Warren, they thought they had a really good chance of getting him, and then Texas got him at the last minute on signing day. They said, man, he is a big physical back, and he's a lot faster than people realize. He could be a, he's going to be a force for these guys for years. Yeah, no doubt. Third down nine. Swoops has a lot of green in front of him. And he knows right where the stakes are located. Blake Johnson pushes him out, but not before another first down. Get that 18-wheeler ready to go in the second half. It's all his. And if you've ever been driving around Southwest Texas, and my partner Spencer Tillman did, the week of the uh, game we had in Lubbock, those 18-wheelers can take uh, control of the road sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're hauling some precarious stuff from time to time, too. On first down. Nice blitz. Here it comes from the middle, and it's Devontae Hinton. You know, it was Hinton that actually made the contact behind the line of scrimmage. And Fajoko as well against Warren, and he got away. He made sure of this, though, also of 11. Hinton comes under control. Watch him break down. That's sound tackling there by Hinton. The young freshman player makes a tremendous effort. Is that a little land shark or sand shark motion? You've been watching some other college programs with that one, <laughs> borrowed from Ole Miss. Second down and 21. You know, the tech coaches talk to us a lot about playing against Arkansas. Gaming and scheming for this game, they felt would be very similar to that knockout conference win they got against the Hogs. Second and 21, Swoops decides to add in. And drags a few Raiders into the their side of the field. Malik Jenkins finally will be credited with the tackle as he's down at the 47-yard line. Still third and very long coming up. Well, Jay Novell, the play caller for Texas, told us it was going to be four that would be contributing to the run production. Swoops was one of the two quarterbacks, even though they're missing Hurd, he's out of the mix now. It's going to be incumbent upon him to find that extra yardage. Third and 16. We haven't called DJ Johnson's name in the passing game of late. Swoops again, looking in the direction of John Burke, and it's incomplete. This kid has a great future. The way back shoulder there, Justice Nelson was covering, but the youngster from Tallahassee had no chance of reeling that one in. Bird has really been productive in the last few weeks, and so they're trying to find a way to get the ball to him more because he's shown more than just flashes. He came open against West Virginia, showed some tremendous opportunities and open space to be a playmaker. Michael Dixon to boot it away. Cameron Batson back deep. End over end punt and the fair catch called for at the eight yard line. So the Longhorns in these conditions rely on defense and field position in the early stages. But the Red Raiders can score in bunches and score with explosive plays too. And oh, by the way, with some divine intervention. Even immaculate. The future of Texas Tech football is in good hands with this sophomore, Patrick Mahomes, young man from White House, Texas. He is uh, an incredible talent. We talked about the it factor, and he, he just has also that uh, not only the great escape capability, Spencer, but he's got uh, just the right amount of forgetfulness after a bad play. That snap and clear mentality oh, serves yeah. him well. First and ten, DeAndre Washington. He's been the go-to guy. And in the open field, hard to grab him. As you can just see, Timothy Cole made the stop. But Jason Hall, 31, went for the open field tackle, and again, he whiffed. Yeah, Jason Hall thought he had him dead to rights, and he just did Washington step right out of his grasp for additional yardage. He's a great player. Play fake, corner blitz from the nickelbacker. Monty couldn't get him, and Mahomes dumps it away 
Outside the tackle box and incomplete. John Bonney came off that edge, and it's always a gamble, Tim, when you do that because you're the last line of defense. 24 comes screaming off that edge. There is no one to contain, so he's lost the edge, and Mahomes is able to extend that ball. Even though you don't get a bunch of yards out of that, it sure puts the stress on the back end of this Longhorn defense. Second down and 10. They certainly haven't gotten Jakeem Grant at least with the exception of that tip drill play. Mahomes gets it out to the 37, maybe 38 yard line. Could be a first down. Anthony Wheeler, 45, the freshman from Dallas, skyline high, making the tackle. It's not like they're not trying to get the ball again. That was actually a run pass option. Yep. We call those RPOs. And uh, Grant went up to the line of scrimmage and then came back, settling in for perhaps the second phase of that option. Yep. But Mahomes read it as a run. Now they marked it two yards shy of the first. So it's third and two. They go with a bunch formation. Lauderdale in motion. Play fake. Little bootleg for Mahomes. Texas was quick to react, but not in time. Timothy Cole does have enough for the first down. Mahomes did a nice job of rolling out again. The edge again lost again by Texas. You got to be able to be smart and play great defense. That was trending happily there. But Nashawn Hughes at the defensive end position that lost containment. First and ten from the 38. Again, they go with the delay to Washington. And to the 41, maybe the 42, Paul Boyette, who uh, is known more for his inside push as opposed to just the run stopping capability, makes the stop. I tell you, Texas Tech truly is taking a page out of what West Virginia did to them on the road. Wendell Smallwood and Russell Shell, they both combined for 270 plus yards, and it was because of that ability to know that they can run that they have. Right there. On the slant to Sadler, and he is dumped at the 40-yard line, Holden but a first down. And Mahomes delivered that one under duress, and Holton Hill is still down. Number five, who made that hit, along with Nashawn Hughes, 19-yard pickup. And another woozy Longhorn goes to the sideline. Well, they're laying some leather down there. And again, that's one thing that Texas is known for, besides just their physical play up front. You can see, again, the zone read action. Nice soft spot in the zone. Sattler splits it. Ugh. Boy, he, he got comes the worst. In there, yeah, he? He, Holton got the worst of that hit. No doubt. First and 10 from the 39 of Texas. Red Raiders up by seven. DeAndre Washington ahead to the 35. Wheeler again will be credited with a stop. Well, this kid is making a push isn't he? he's gonna get beyond the 1300 mark tonight has had a really marvelous season without question and i think is as underrated as any running back in the country underneath on the shallow cross that's brad pearson and he's to the 25 yard line i'll tell you what's happening right now is flag down as they sort this out Holding by number 62 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty and replay second down. That's the left tackle, the Raven Clark, 62. An All-America candidate coming in. He's got a lot of uh, onlookers about a future beyond college football. Yeah, he's a Guilty great player. Yep. Yeah, he's a great player. He's been dealing with injuries pretty much all year. But this, is an under, this is an underrated offensive line. Yeah. Second and 16. Little bubble screen to Grant. Nothing doing this time, but boy, he saw three Longhorns all over him. <laughs> I mean, did. they have bracketed him all night. They really have. And, and again, that was an exceptional play design with a lot of deception around it. But I will give Eric Morris, offensive coordinator for Texas Tech and, and Cliff Kingsbury, tremendous credit for their halftime adjustments. They are controlling the clock now, moving it primarily via the run. And some wide passes that affect act like runs. They're controlling the clock. This is what Texas wanted to do to them. Third and 16. Nice escape. Mahomes dials it up for Sandler. Inside the 15. At the 13. That's where he's so dangerous when he gets outside the pocket and 
That was a laser thrown on the run. It was the improvisational skills by Mahomes that made it possible again. Outstanding. That was a quick uh, wide receiver screen thrown at the feet of Jakeem Grant incomplete. So a 31-yard connection to Sadler as Mahomes with another improvisation. Making plays with his feet, extending plays, throwing the ball and running where players aren't as another Texas Longhorn is down on the field. Yeah, Bruno Ford, who had come back into the game after being hurt, is hurt again. I'll tell you one thing is for certain the way these Texas Longhorns are flying around they're not not having success because their their effort is lacking no, they are after no them indeed we'll be right back look at the Big 12 standings Spencer and certainly Bedlam is going to matter a great deal about the outcome of this conference but the question will be will it be enough for them to get into the college football playoff if it goes the way of Oklahoma, as you see Puna Ford coming off on most of his own power, as uh, we were going to break, I think, I think the Big 12 could be in peril again if Oklahoma loses to Oklahoma State. They could be in big-time peril. DeAndre Washington, out of the shotgun, takes the handoff. He's inside the five, down to the three, should be enough. That was the line to make. The line to make was the four. Timmy, take a listen to this. Well, that's a first and goal coming up. Washington again, pounding it, and he is in there for a touchdown. Well, you're right, Spencer. They made quite an adjustment. That's as much of a ball control series as you'll ever see from a Kingsbury air, air raid offense. And that's adjustment and a credit, again, both Coach Morris and Kiff Kingsbury for doing a fine job of saying, look, we know what we want to be philosophically, but this is where the opportunity is. This is what coaching is. It's about adapting to the circumstances real time to get the results that you want. That field puts it right through the uprights. And in a phone booth style game, it should be advantage Texas. This time, Washington and his Red Raider mates win it against Hookham. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. 24 to 10, our score here on FS1 tonight. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Bruce Feldman. Happy to have you with us. And by Texas Tech quick strike standards, that's as methodical as it can get. 334 off the clock. And a really outstanding drive, primarily on the run of DeAndre Washington. And the, the takeaway, Tim, is they've done this by and large, as you've indicated, with the run game, but not at the expense of their passing attack. They're averaging 355 yards a game passing. They're at 232 now. So, again, that part of their game still intact. Well, the Las Vegas Invitational is one of the top early season tournaments in college basketball. We've got all of the action for you right here on FS1 as 14th ranked Cal takes on San Diego State. It all tips off at midnight Eastern only on FS1. Going to be a tremendous basketball season. Really looking forward to the rest of the games. Cal's got a tremendous freshman you need to keep an eye on. I'll leave you, Spencer, and head into uh, Bill Raftery country soon. I'm going to be following <laughs> you. I might be in your hip pocket. You never know, man. Look out. <laughs> First and ten, Chris Warren is in the backfield. And uh, with the pressure, Swoops decides to just dump it away outside the tackle box incomplete. Let's go down to Bruce Feldman with more on the walking wounded. Yeah, Tim. Such a depleted Texas sideline here. Malik Jefferson, left ankle injury. He went back in the locker room after trying to run out on the sideline. Hassan Ridgeway, their best interior lineman, he keeps trying to push off. He really is limping and hobbled on the sideline. Left ankle injury, questionable, but he'll return. Wow. Warren takes it off the right side, a hit for a couple of yards. Stopped by Deshaun Johnson, number seven. There's some more the injured Ridgeway. Saw Puno Ford a moment ago. 
You know, I'm looking at, you know, Warren Run. Obviously, had that big run earlier. It reminds me of uh, Caleb Belange at Arizona State. Yeah. He's slow, deceptive initially, but he's got the big end speed to hurt you on the back end. They need the freshman to step up again. Third down and eight. Swoops on the shallow cross, complete to Burt, but nothing doing as he slips and falls at the 30-yard line. Well short of the first down, and they'll have to boot it away. Yeah, the Longhorns are still going to have to be a little bit more aggressive right now and push the ball upfield. I know their number one quarterback is out, but they've still got to, while they're within distance, keep this Texas Tech defense in the mindset that they've got to defend the entire depth of the field. Yeah, you know, we talked to Charlie Strong, and... His entire staff, including Jay Norvell, listen, that, you know, Gerard Hurd may be athletically an answer, but no, no one's ready to commit that he's the total future. They've got to find a passing game short and long term here at Austin if they're going to be back to the promised land the way they'd like to be. That's a 41 yard boot and uh, the ball will be inside the 30 yard line of Texas Tech here in the capital of the Lone Star State in the third. College football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. The ball just shy of the 30 at the 29-yard line, first and 10 for the Red Raiders. Justin Stockton has joined DeAndre Washington in the backfield out of the shotgun. That is Stockton in motion. Here comes pressure off the edge. Boy, wow. Wow. The, the, the screen was lined up, wasn't it? And it then, really was. And Washington lost his footing. Texas was bringing the entire house. They had six guys coming on that one, and I'm telling you, if he'd kept his foot, footing it would have been <laughs> off to the races you can see all six of them converging on the quarterback Mahomes did his job and sold it properly but again the elements lingering over from the first half no rain now but the slippage still prominent second and ten off the edge more pressure again this little curl is caught but the drop it was dropped and recovered by Texas. John Bowie sticking his nose in there. That's the break they're looking for. John Bowie stuck his nose in there and got that one out, Tim. And That's uh, Ominahu, number 90. Charles Ominahu, number 90, who comes away with the recovery. Yet another freshman on the field as it was ripped out once it was caught by Sadler. You can see him holding them up and waiting until the posse comes. And that's the hallmark of a team that's looking for turnovers. Bonnie knocked it out. Just as you mentioned, the nickelbacker. Smart play by him, really. A tremendous play. There is a big difference between teams that are good tackling teams and teams that are turnover teams. The two are incongruent. If you're good tackling teams, you tend not to turn people over. But that was a classic case of Bonnie done a tremendous job of holding them up for the posse. Well, right, they go with a wide receiver screen to Burt. He's got outstanding speed, this freshman. Well, Jay Novell needs to go pace the tempo here. I know he doesn't have the starter in there, but they've got to get the play in and try to catch him on the hills quickly after the turn. It's not as if Swoops hasn't had enough snaps to go quick. Yep. Chris Warren is back in the game, dotting the backfield for Swoops. And he'll take it. It's wide open. Inside the 10. Touchdown. job of Jay Novell taking advantage of the momentum shift and a red hot rookie running back second score of the night this one perhaps the most important today but who knows with the craziness that's gone on so far in this one Rose for the extra point about DeAndre Washington and it's deserved. But how about the freshman Warren? Making a miss in tight oh. quarters, Timmy. How about that move? 14 carries, 146 yards, and two touchdowns. 24 to 17 our score. The opportunistic Longhorns come away with a critical turnover of Texas Tech and cash in quickly with the freshman running back Warren who has really stepped up to the challenge. Kirk Johnson did too before he left the game injured. But they've been reduced to Warren or maybe no one else in the backfield. So many guys are hurt. 
but it's almost like the defensive side senses that and they're trying to create offense themselves as John Bonney did in stripping that ball away. Rams have two return for touchdowns this year. He gets it out to the 30 yard line. Talk about that low center of gravity and his ability to keep his balance. And again, it goes back to John Bonney. This is a red shirt freshman, okay? It's a smart play. The Sadler forward progress is not stopped. And he just knocks it out of there, pokes it away. And that leads Warren, who got a really good block and also made an outstanding individual effort to get into the end zone. Again, Timmy, it's all about the context of a game determines your strategy. Now, if you're up and trying to protect the lead, then maybe you make the sure tackle. But knowing and sensing does body on that play that they need a score. He's not trying to make a sure tackle. He's going after the ball. That's a nice play. Stockton. On the screen, stopped at the 30-yard line by Bonnie again, number 24. This, a lot of these plays are being made by the future of this Longhorns football team, both offensively and defensively. And they know they're going to be good, and I think that was one of the exciting things that came out of our meeting, the sense that with the newfound support from administration, that if they just hang on, this is going to be the Texas Longhorns of old real soon. Second and nine. Pressure off the edge. They go to Lauderdale. And he did a nice job of getting away from Duke Thomas. Devin Lauderdale. Quick strike capability. All the way down to the nine-yard line. Jason Hall ushered him out. Just like that. The air raid says, we'll see you and we'll raise you. <laughs> and but for Jason Hall, they would have raised him much more. But an outstanding individual effort on the offensive side. And clearly Jason Hall saving what would have been a sure touchdown had he not continued to stay in close chase. Duke Thomas had a chance, Spencer, in the open field, and he whiffed. 59 yards on the play. DeAndre Washington back in the game. First and goal. He's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by Timothy Cole. Timothy did a nice job, but here's the play again, Timmy. Open field, it's about making plays and again Lauderdale does a fine job of changing direction he's mindful of where everybody is running away from those orange shirts pitch to the wide side to Washington wrapped up behind the line Shiro Davis well, you're talking about Shiro Davis intentional he comes screaming from that defensive end position hacking away trying to create another turnover this is a kid from my hometown Spencer sure. Woodlawn High School talk about studs Joe Ferguson Terry Bradshaw even in basketball, Robert Parrish coming from that small school on the western side of my hometown. Davis is still down, and that's why we have the whistle to stop play. He had been banged up, by the way, was playing hurt. After making that tackle, he went down to the knee, and that's what you have to do in order to get that uh, official time. Texas historically known for his defensive line play, and Again, as uh, Vance Bedford looks on, the defensive coordinator, he's concerned about one of the key cogs in his stop unit. Well, they're running out of bodies. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, Hughes has been in and out of the game. Ridgeway in and out of the game. Puna Ford as well. Malik Jefferson's done. I mean, they, uh, they've been banged and bruised and bewildered through the course of the game and are trying to hang on now with Texas Tech looking at a third down and goal, but two negative plays have helped this Texas defense stymie Texas Tech after that 59-yard explosion. Well, this is the second time tonight you've seen Charlie Strong out there looking after his fallen player. And then on the sidelines, Vance Bedford is talking to the troops, trying to get them rallied to, and be aware of the fact they've got to step up. By the way, um, North Louisiana uh, North Louisiana has been a pretty good hotbed for Texas mm -hmm. just as the state of Texas has been a hotbed for Oklahoma and LSU all that <laughs> you're right all that area long yes, view, the Lobos have produced some great talent Hallsville yep. Texas places like that third and goal This is where Mahomes can be devastating. Not this time. Nation Hughes, another one of those that had been hurt.
Comes in for Davis and makes the play. Bryce Cottrell was also in that mix. And boy, I tell you, I've never seen guys up front so big, running so fast over such an extended point of time. So it's amazing. You know, Mahomes is scrambling. He's got three guys. One is open in the middle of the field right here in the yeah. underneath route. Begin that pressure. The heat was coming a big time at him. That was Davis. Reginald Davis. Yep. And here's now Hatfield for the field goal try. But this is a huge victory for the Texas defense after that 59 yard connection to hold the Red Raiders to three and keep this game within reach at only 10 points with 255 remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, but remember what the metric is for Cliff Kingsbury and this Red Raider offense. It's all about points per possession. They would prefer for them to be touchdowns, but if they're not, they've scored. And so, but this is a win for Texas, in my opinion, because again, we've seen the big strike capability of this prolific offense ranked third in the nation. Fox Sports proudly supports Bowls of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. And our thoughts, prayers, and wishes on this wonderful, great American holiday to all of our troops that served and are continuing to serve in a war-torn world that we live in today. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Indeed. Jay Johnson is back deep, awaiting the kick. Now a 10-point game with 2.55 to play in, in the third quarter. They'll take it for the six. Well, uh -oh. actually, that is DeJay's spot, isn't it? He loves it here. He loves to cut against the green. All the great returners have that capability to serve players. You come down on those lanes and those funnels and you converge and you get a little bit lax and then he bounces it out full speed. Jay showing the perimeter. Judicious running. Watch him bring it this way a little bit and then bounce it all the way back to the back side. That's tremendous job of anticipating the flow. That was a good job with the telestrator there. You like that? You, you did that almost as fast as he made the cut. <laughs> I've been practicing. It's like working, watching the Weather Channel, one of those upper level troughs. That's right, a line of low pressure. <laughs> We're going to be flying through that tomorrow, I think. <laughs> Warren is in the game on first and ten from the 40. Wide receiver screen to Burt. Nice stiff arm. Which enables him to get what yardage was there. About three, and that's it. Justice Nelson, number 31, making the stop. Yeah, it didn't look like much, but that extra stiff arm was enough to kind of put them in a position where it's not necessarily a win on first down, but that three is not bad for what Texas is all about. Second down, seven. Burt's down at the bottom of your screen again. And here goes Warren. That's another first down. He is really in sync right now. Micah Alway, number 18, making the tackle for the Red Raiders. That offensive line is clearing the path for him. You see there's going to be a line. I hope we can show it again. Uh, maybe not this play, but a couple of plays down the road. The hips of the offensive linemen, when they settle back away from the line of scrimmage like this, typically in rundown scenarios, they're pulling. Play fake, bootleg action, and the pass is caught. That is Alex De La Torre. And you know, it was one right there for him, but I think the uh, slippery turf got to him that time. Yeah, De La Torre doesn't catch the ball a whole lot when they throw to him. You see him come across the formation here. Nice play action away. Clearly just, just fooled the defender on the backside, and that was uh, Devontae Hinton in trailing technique. Still a six-yard gain, so second and four. Nice. There goes Warren. There he is again. Touchdown. Look at the eyes and the focus, the ability to read the kick out block. De La Torre, who dropped it on the previous play, makes a great one, doesn't miss that one, and Warren pays it off for the third time tonight. The freshman he says, we're not done yet. Oh, he is just lathered up. You can give it to him 15 more times. He's got those fresh legs, Spencer. Yeah, he does. I mean, it, heck, between the two freshmen, they had less than 200 yards, so... He came in with about 88 yards total for the year, so his legs indeed are fresh. Well, he's got 177 now tonight, and 145 of those 177 on three touchdowns. Wow. 
I, I'd say that that tells the story. I mean, that's just amazing. Now, the key is you got to learn how to run well with a full cup of success. You've heard us talk about it a lot with young players, and we'll see if he can manage that. He's kept the look of attention, doesn't he? <laughs> amazing. Well, he's special, Tim. Three touchdowns. He got it in traffic. He showed us the stiff arm ability to run with intention in close quarters. He was able to sift through that porous defense, turn it into a sieve on this play. Again, reached the perimeter on the outside now and finished with another strong effort for a score. All told, three touchdowns for the young true freshman. I'll tell you, too, the other factor that comes into play, remember that turnover caused by John Bonney. Because the game tilted on that play. It's a 14 point game. Texas Tech seemingly has control. They get the strip of Sadler. Yep. That leads to a quick burst from Warren, a touchdown, and then they get it back, and Warren burns him again. And Jakeem Grant will watch this one go through the end zone. Well, this is fun now, man. This is good football being played here. Good football. And you don't think Cliff Kingsbury understands how big this is for his program? I mean, this is his third season. Coming off of 4-8 and eight in 2014, he wants to continue to gather momentum for his still very young program. By and large, these are guys that weren't recruited by Texas. They've always played with a chip on their shoulder. Texas, in the midst of what is, for now, a losing season, appears vulnerable. He wants this game, as does his team. First and ten. Washington. And he's beyond the 30 to the 32 yard line. And I think one of the real keys, Spencer, will be, you know, the fatigue factor for this Texas defense in the late stages of this game. And I would say alternately, the fact that they're able to endure despite having so many frontline players out could be a narrative they leverage later. DeAndre Washington in the flat. Look at him keep his points and break tackles beyond the 45 yard line. No ruling out at the 46. Another first down. That was Demetrius Alton that almost missed in that play, but again, Texas Tech's moving their way down the football field effectively, taking their time, looking in control. You keep w wondering when Jakeem Grant is going to bite him again. <laughs> you know, you just. But to this point, the one thing that Bedford wanted was to keep him from being a factor, and he has. That's Jonathan Giles sitting down on the curl route. Stopped at the 48-yard line of Texas by Duke Thomas. Yeah, Duke did a nice job of defending that play. Again, there are a lot of individual battles going on, but Duke held his own for a nice stop. Stockton. Well, that was a very patient run by the youngster. It was, but Stockton came in with a little fresh new burst there, so it was like a changeup, a 3-2 pitch. It came in, and, and, and he had a little extra mustard there on yeah, that play. Well, he's very quick. They've uh, nicknamed him Flash because of his outstanding speed out of Steele High School. Ball on the Texas 34. Time winding down here in the third quarter. A three-point game on Thanksgiving night. Happy to have you with us. Play fake team, and here goes Mahomes. First down at the 17-yard line as we come to the end of the third quarter. They'll mark it at the 16 when we come back to open the fourth quarter of play. How much fun is this, partner? It's outstanding, man. This is one of the best games we've had all year. It has been. Don't tell me teams that are at or near 500 don't care. This is college football. Everything matters every week. We open the fourth quarter with Texas Tech leading by only three, but driving in the scoring zone again at the 17 of Texas. DeAndre Washington in the backfield. Pearson in the H-back position, 83, and he'll lead the way for Washington, who cuts back to the 15, so a gain of only two. And as we open this fourth quarter of play, Spencer, the last time Texas defensively was in this position, they were able to hold serve and keep the Red Raiders out of the end zone. It's paramount, don't you think, that they do it again? It really is, but they're doing it with their, not their front line players. Three key ones are out of this lineup. 
Washington breaks free. Stop free into the end zone. Touchdown. Jason Hall is the last defender as Cliff Kingsbury looks on and delight. Jason Hall was the last one there. You can see the nice move inside, fins one off, and Hall misses. Washington pays it off. Outstanding job from Washington. Nation Hughes had a shot at him but missed. DeAndre Washington's just a great back. He really is. Hatfield for the extra point. Well, just as they had cut it to three, Vance Bedford's defense, unfortunately, on this night, have a lot of guys sitting down on the sidelines. Can they survive the fourth? Only took about 30 seconds plus, 31 to be exact, for Texas Tech to extend their lead here in the fourth quarter. Back to 10, 34-24. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Bruce Feldman. And uh, this may be the storyline for the fourth quarter. David Gibbs, new to his position, with one of the worst tackling defenses historically in college football. He knows it, and he's dealing with it as best he can, trying to change the culture. And Vance Bedford, who does have a pretty solid starting seven in that front seven, Spence, but their back end is getting blown away by DeAndre Washington, and they've also been banged up early. Which one of these defenses can survive may determine the outcome. Well, you're absolutely right, and I think that Texas Tech, David, his defense really has shown great improvement over the last few weeks. We had him against Kansas State, and they actually tackled quite well. Yeah, look at these missed tackles we're talking about. Well, you can see it again in tight quarters. It's so tough, Timmy, to, to, to catch someone who's 220 pounds in space like that. I don't care if he's a freshman or not. The physics work against you. If you're effectively spread out, these guys are on an island a lot of times. And just like a wide receiver knows what route he's trying to run, a running back will know exactly what he wants to do in most cases before the defensive back can react. And if he doesn't have help around him in this spread error you miss once and you lose big time Warren again in the backfield and he is really all that's left at that position with Johnson done for the night and the stretch play cuts it up again how do you do oh, he finishes going over 200 yards on the night and continues to roll right through this Texas Tech defense which once they get past the first level has been decimated well, he's running so heavy as Warren again, showing you the ability to run through tackles and would-be efforts there. That was Justin Stockton on the other end, and what a tremendous job of just finishing that run heavy. From the 48-yard line, it's first down. Blitz off the corner. Here goes Warren the other way. Wow. Bang! Zoom! Moore! Down to the 30! He's asking to come out. I don't know if he can. Pete Robinson made the stop. Well, he took Pete for an extra ride, too. Pete went on ride for about an additional seven yards. He went low and bounced him. Defying physics on that play. Typically, the low man is supposed to win, but Warren went down and lifted him up. He patted with shoulder pads as if to say, can you give me a blow? And they, <laughs> they said, no, I don't think so. You're going to continue to carry it. Had those stats. He was at 202 and counting before that carry. Robertson makes another stop. Well, as we said before, he only had 88 yards or so coming in, and now he should be out. fresh, man. <laughs> uh, they're finally going to give him a break after that one. Officially up to 228 yards, and they'll get a timeout. Well, got an injured Texas Tech player, too, as you see the official numbers now. 19 for 228 for Warren. And uh, that's Devontae Hinton. Devontae, one of the best defenders, and another freshman from Texas City, Texas, who's leaving the game. And that's bad news for Gibbs. That's one of his best defenders. Yeah, he likes him a great deal. He got hit on the knee. He's kind of motioning the to the effect of what happened to him and yeah. that knee went inside and that interior ligament is nothing to fool around with. All right, the play clock is on. Texas was taking advantage of the injury to get over to the sidelines. Roger Bernard has checked into the game. Texas Tech trying to get the right personnel in the game. So Bernard gets set back 
As you see the clear out to, to Jay Johnson. Stopped a couple of yards shy of the first down at the 23-yard line. Jay Johnson can do some things, too, if they get him in space properly. He can make some guys miss. He's a very athletic, a little smallish, but he's strong. He's not quite the counterpart that Jakeem Grant is, but he still has that kind of physicalness to him. Grant, of course, was a former power lifter. Strong, physical, but kept under the wrap of this wounded but very talented Texas defense. Today. Dorian Leonard, number eight, is checked in at wide receiver. Up at the top of your screen, he's the second receiver up there, and there swoops. The 18 leader calls his own number, and he's down to the 16. And the fans here with the swoops, swoops that you hear inside Darrell K. Memorial Stadium. They go tempo here. Trying to move quickly. Look at him break tackles. Wow. A lot of green in front of him. A lot of green. And could it be Pater? They're going to say no. Just shy of the end zone at the one. Well, he did a nice job as he of getting out of trouble and then stretching that to the corner to the pylon to try to get in for the score. Outstanding effort by the quarterback. Ball was not loose. I think he wanted to reach out. But it was knocked loose at the one-yard line. Had he gotten the ball extended, Spencer, I think he would have gotten it to the pylon. Yeah, he's just got to be careful about leaving his feet down there again. Even though he's a big quarterback, man, not a lot good can happen when you leave your feet. They mark it at the two. Dorian Leonard in motion there. 18. All the way to the foot line, it would appear, just shy of the end zone. It'll be second and goal as Keenan Ward, number 15, the junior from Snyder, Texas, made the stop. Well, the good thing there is Swoops is stand behind his pads and trying to stay low to get in, and again, he was down just shy of the goal line. <laughs> it's not as if either one of these coaching staffs don't know what's coming. <laughs> it's can either defense stop it. Well, Texas believes they can block anybody. This, so I would, you can't be shocked if they're going to do the same thing. Swoops. There it is. Touchdown. You can make a case that his forward progress was almost stopped. And then he just decided to make the 6'4", 250 fall in. <laughs> he just leaned over and backed in there and he just and he's over man. That's a no doubt great effort well, You know they've got that package in there for him, but they didn't wait to do it because of necessity Had to have him in the game because herds down but tremendous job of swoops Moving this ball club and keeping him in contention. Well, David Gibbs is just in disbelief over there <laughs> It's like we know what's coming. We're selling out for the run and we can't stop a freshman who's now breaking Cedric Benson's freshman rushing record. Returning guys that only had a few carries in the stars of today and the future. 34-31, Texas Tech leads. College football on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. Pounding and grounding. Big Bertha and beyond. The percussion section letting us know. Here in Austin, Texas, and this uh, young man has been called upon to quarterback the entire game after the apparent concussion symptoms that were given to Gerard Hurd forced him out of the game. But it has been Chris Warren that's the story. We mentioned he's broken. Benson's Record for yardage by a freshman rushing the football and he's moving in on Jamal Charles even now. I mean, it's absurd what he's doing in this football game. And we'll have a touchback. Texas Tech will have it. And let's go down to Bruce Feldman. Bruce? Yeah, it's him. David Gibbs talking to his linebackers. He is very frustrated. His guys are just not being able to hold up and respond to the physical challenge Chris Warren, the freshman, has taken to them, especially in the second half. We'll see if they can do better than they have the last couple of series where they've been just mauled so far. Yeah, you know, to some extent, he's been taking some fluids, by the way, Warren. Now he's up on the bike. I mean, you know he's got to be a little bit winded, Spencer, because he's never worked this hard this season. Well, he's fresh. I don't think that guy, he wants to be back on the field as quick as he possibly can. He's ready. 
DeAndre Washington stopped, but then he gets away. Look out. He does not want the freshman to take headlines away from him because he's got a tremendous future and has been delivering the goods all season long. And if I go back to that age-old question, Spencer, can either one of these defenses hold up against the opposition's great running attack? Well, if fully healthy, that would be Texas, but if that's not the case, clearly, with three front-line players down. I mean, Washington's got 152. That's not a bad evening's work. From the 45 first down. Good option game. Yeah, towards the boundary. And the cut back to midfield for DeAndre. Well, Anthony Wheeler did a nice job. He's one of the other complimentary parts of this defense. Running and chasing to keep the Longhorns in it and maybe get the ball back and get some more magic from Swoops. I mean, a lot of people might be waking up tomorrow and seeing one of those basketball <laughs> scores, Spencer, but they want no idea how much of the ground game old style sort of old style southwest conference football we've been watching tonight absolutely second and five justin stockton stopped this time for a negative play behind the line of scrimmage by holton hill he's another one of those youngsters that was banged up a few moments ago managed to get healthy and back into the game well, you remember back in the old days when they had James Brown through the mid-90s and some of those guys were part of those running attacks that the Longhorns had. They were outstanding, known for their run game. It's hearkening back to that. Third and seven. and company was there providing additional pressure forcing Mahomes out of the pocket and throwing the air and pass and just a tremendous effort by this depleted front of Texas in the linebacking core that's missing his captain and star guys like Cottrell and Ridgeway even a little who had a fumble recovery earlier or being asked to make plays and they have here is Jay Johnson again look out look out Senior night, he's trying to make the most of it. Gets it out to the 33-yard line. Well, the Horns defense stood up in that last series. They sure did. And again, it kind of reminded me of the play that Oklahoma made in their contest against TCU to thwart off the comeback by the Horn Frogs. We got a good one. I mentioned a moment ago, this uh, effort by Warren is becoming statistically one of the most glorious nights in history for a freshman. In 2007, Jamal Charles had 290. Okay, first time that a UT freshman has gone above 200. Benson, he's passed him already. And here he goes again. And again. And again. The hits just keep on coming from this kid. When David Gibbs defense doesn't have a solution for him, it's coming. Some of it now is coming off tackle where he's got those defensive linemen not able to run or chase. And David is looking for answers, but the young freshman providing no relief in this onslaught on this Texas Tech defense. He's at 244 and counting now. Play fake swoops. Nice to get him looking long. I don't think Burt picked it up until very late in the pass pattern. And it falls in complete second down and 10. Jay Norvell had that one in his back pocket. He got it to the wide side of the field. And then Bird really missed that one. I'm not so sure if he didn't see the ball or if it was just outside of his purview. He just couldn't see it, Timmy, apparently. There you see what we're talking about with Charles. And it's going to get even greater as we go on here. But he just won't stop. <laughs> this is when a young man finds out and realizes just how good he is now. Look, there's no denying Texas Tech's issues in terms of tackling. They have had some negative plays tonight in terms of penetration, but uh, David Gibbs makes no bones about it. They're trying to change the culture since first season. They will improve in this area. But yeah, for tonight, 
This kid now becomes a star. Yeah. There was something to be said about confidence. It doesn't really matter how bad or how much they're struggled on the back end for Texas Tech. This kid is having a tremendous day running the football. Swoops. Wow. Swoops. See you later. Touchdown, Texas. The rest of the way, big fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. And we hope you enjoy our Thanksgiving. I know in old Canada they celebrated in October, but tonight our November Fest has been some fun here in the Lone Star State. It's been a cornucopia of yeah. offense, man. Atypical running the game as opposed to anything else. Both teams outstanding. Total rush yards around 520 prior to that smooth touchdown. Only 377 in total passing. How about that flipping of the script? All right. Talk me through this tremendous block from the fullback here, Spencer. Alex Delatore is going to come here and seal number 41 on the inside there. That play is what causes this narrow lane for Swoops to sift out and find some space. Oh. As Lombardi would say, you got a seal here and a seal there. <laughs> and Swoop does the rest and hits his head on the goal post as he scores. I mean, he, Outstanding. He took out Malik Jenkins, one of the better defenders on that Texas Tech team. But, you know, Charlie told us that lately he felt as if Swoops was playing a little better. I thought the decision to bring him off the bench and create that 18-wheeler concept was one of his best coaching decisions. It really was. was. Out to the 29. It was a great coaching decision because he's managing a situation where a guy was a starter and had the edge coming into this offseason, unseated by a younger player. you got to manage that relationship. Heads up by Charlie for doing the right thing there, keeping him engaged. Second and six for Mahomes. Looking for yet another quick strike. Come back to the ball, and that's what Reginald Davis did. The junior from Tenaha, Texas, number three in receiving for this team. Now Duke Thomas has got to be careful, number 21, on the back end. They're going to be pacing and tempoing them. They've got to be sure with their tackles. This is not the time to be looking for balls to fly out. You've got to be sure with your tackle. There goes DeAndre Washington for another first down. Stopped by Devontae Davis, number nine. Once again, pace and tempo being used as a tactical advantage for Texas Tech. This is what they do. Got to wonder at some point in time if they're going to go to the air. They go wide nice. receiver screen. There's plenty of room for Davis. Diving forward to the 41-yard line, it appears. That was a healthy pickup. Yeah, Reginald Davis. But, you know, that's a win for the Texas Longhorns because that was a run-pass option. He had a chance, or at least was looking to go deep with that ball. Not much there as a downed Longhorn wounded. Yeah, again, Deshaun Hughes, his second time he's gone down tonight. And an incredible evening for these impeccable backs. One a senior, the other a freshman. And Warren now at 251 and counting. Let me put this in perspective for you on Warren. Washington's having a great game. And listen to this. Ricky Williams is the all-time single game rusher at 350 okay Warren is 99 yards away from that but you look at Roosevelt Leaks you look at Ricky Williams I mean it's incredible what he's done I mean, he's put himself up there with Vince Young with Ricky Williams he's already passed guys like Vincent and Charles for a single game I mean it's off the charts what this kid is doing Earl Campbell he's up there in the that's the Pantheon. The that's Pantheon. The, Absolutely. That's the Pantheon of great running backs for this. I don't, I don't care who you're playing. Twitter can go wild. I don't <laughs> care who you're playing. There are 11 guys trying to tackle you. Second and four.
Looking long. The home run to Grant. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Yes, he does at the one yard line. <laughs> And it was only a matter of time until Grant exploded, and they waited, gave him the wide side of the field, and there he was, a little mighty might, coming up with a big-time, timely play. 40 yards for him, and his Stockton right at the goal line. Mahomes wants the touchdown. He got it. A late call, but he got it. And Texas Tech asserts himself and regains the lead of Cliff. Looks like, well, he's not that far removed from being a player. He's as excited as one of them right now. Well, Eric Morris is offensive coordinator. We know that Cliff is involved in the offense as much as anybody, but he's only 30 as Eric Morris, and his breath still probably smells like Similac, man. He's a young cat, so their exuberance is excused. And yet another injured Longhorn on that play. Or was there a timeout? There may have been a timeout. I'm not sure. Oh, they're gonna have, we're going to have an official review. Well, that was a given, wasn't it? It took him a while to give the call, but you can see, remember, he wasn't down until he crossed the goal line. I think that's a good call. He was not down until right there, and the ball crosses the plane. I don't see any reason for that to be reversed. I will say this, though. I mean, look how many. You got three Longhorns there at the party trying to prevent him from getting in. There's no give up in this Texas Longhorn defense that's down three key men with a young freshman, Anthony Wheeler, left to be the cog in the middle of that. The thing you've got to remember, Spencer, is those tacklers were underneath him, so he was not, he was not down, he was not down yeah. until he extended and the ball broke the plane, and that was all that was needed. The review. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Very good, sir. Well, you and I have gone to the Mike Pereira school. <laughs> we, we, we watch the video every week. Yep. He's, he's got some of the most entertaining reviews I've, I've ever seen. It's <laughs> yeah. tremendous. He's a bit of a comedian, too. Yes, he is. Incredible catch by Jakeem Grant. It was only a matter of time. This young man has more than half of the total offense and receiving for the entire Red Raider team. Jakeem Grant, 3,164 career receiving yards. That's a Texas Tech record. Think about the, we talked about the names and the running backs. How about the receivers that, uh, I mean, we're talking about Amendola, we're talking Wes Welker, Crabtree. we're talking Michael Crabtree, yeah, absolutely. who did in Texas when Texas was in a position to be number one a few years back. Andrew Beck taking that pooch kick and a fair catch. Well, here's Grant right here, and again, you knew there was only a matter of time before he got cut loose. He went straight on an all-go route, just flat out, outruns the coverage and finds himself open there. That was John Bonney who had a key Takeaway gets burned on that particular play and again Grant explosive again Unreal just a, a, a We're in a stage of the game now Spencer Where Texas has got to be thinking about not just scoring Here's Warren bouncing off tacklers and adding to his tote board I'm sure down after about a seven yard game by Deshaun Johnson, but you've also got to be mindful of, of when you score and how much time on the clock because clearly neither of these defenses right now have the collective hook spot to stop the others running game. But I'm still just wrestling with the notion that we're in a legitimate Texas shootout here. Yeah. And the Texas Longhorns are going toe to toe without a significant passing attack. Yeah, and they force Texas Tech to play their game. It's amazing. And we've got a marker down pre snap. Looks like a false start coming. The full start by number 66 of the offense. The five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Cedric Flowers, senior from Houston's North Shore High School. Great tradition there at North Shore, Houston, Texas. For these seniors, 22 of them, it's their night, and their collective records, uh, you think back of the time they were here, 27 and 22,
And then they're, uh, they're appealing to a freshman to get them to 28 and 22. It's Warren hoping to take these seniors to the promised land tonight. He's up to 268 after that carry and another first down. Warren skipping and prancing and jumping over would-be tacklers, man. He, he's something special to watch. We know he's young, but we've watched the evolution of a guy in real time before our eyes. He is a star of the future. He's now in a single season, sixth all time, rushing the football for 268 and counting. Roderick Bernard has checked in for him, number 27. And Swoops carries it ahead. Stop after about a yard gain, and that's it. Well, one adjustment that uh, David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, has made. He's closed down and pitched inside with his defenders. They sometimes only go with three down linemen, and they do play two gap techniques, particularly with that nose tackle. But they've shored up that inside run game. It's going to be tough. I think a speed sweep concept would be very nice against this loop. Play fake. Swoops in some trouble. Heaves it. And it's caught. About two yards shy of the first down by Burt. We'll see where forward progress lets him. And a late flag comes down by the line judge on the near side of the field. That was a big time throw, Tim. It was a little bit dangerous, but man, that's that's an NFL caliber throw. I think we may have uh, offensive lineman downfield on that play. It was late developing. An eligible player downfield, yeah. number 55 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty and replay second down. Connor Williams, the freshman, left tackle. But again, in, in defense of him, there was pressure coming, which allowed Swoops too much time to get rid of the ball. And he got caught in no man's land. They're playing a little behind the chains this time now. Yeah, second this and is 14. tough spot to be in. You don't want to be in second and long. Especially in this offense. But Warren can erase that with one tote. And here it is. They were ready for it this time. Pete Robertson, number 10. He had a lot of help. Plenty of help coming that time for the Texas Tech defense. Yeah, but Pete Robertson, that rush in, defensive end number 10, really came down for David. Gibbs and his defense had really played assignment football and closed that opportunity to get away again. Third down, 14. Low snap, handled by Swoops. He decides to tuck it and run. He gets ahead to the 41, so he makes up some of the ground. Malik Jenkins makes the stop. Now a decision coming for Charlie. I think they, they're going to play. I, I think they're go for it. I mean, here's what I, why I would do it. If you spread them out four wide again like they did on the previous play, he could have released a tad earlier yep. and been up the field for big-time yardage. Well, they're going to put Warren flanked to the top of your screen, Jay Norvell is. As he sets this up, big Warren, call here now. Warren at the very top of your screen. That's a good, good timeout call because you've got seven guys in the box now. They're not honoring the four wide concept. Now, at the very least, you force Texas Tech to use a timeout. So the illegal man downfield is going to thwart this drive to some extent. Watch 55 the tackle. Well, here's he is scooping out here. That's that's 55 there on the release, and so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I mean, yeah. I know he's here, right here. I mean, I, yeah, we've seen a lot worse yeah. in the zone read concept than that. You're right. It's provided the information that was given us by the referee was accurate, that he was the man for whole guilty. And I think that play. There, there ought to be judgment scenarios, too. Again, that's happening away from where the play and the action was going. Yeah, you'd like to see it affect the play, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Fourth and seven here. Warren is now back in the backfield. They had him flanked out as a receiver in the last set. Play of the game right here. Run it. Swoops going deep for Johnson. Well, that was an interesting decision. It was. It really was. Tevin Madison was there covering. Uh, you're going for the home run ball when you need seven to move the chains. 
with that much time remaining and where the ball is curious decision there it really was you may have had a man match up but again I think the fact that you run the football that's what they do that's who they are and I know the flip script has been flipped tonight but I think he would stick with a run call on that a play run off of a four wide concept and take your chances there as opposed to the deep ball well Texas Tech can effectively get a first down and close this baby out and they've got it at the 40 yard line Oh, they go with a little chicanery to Grant. A free flicker from the Ruski style. Touchdown. You use that terminology, hip pocket. Well, it just grew larger for Cliff Kingsbury there. And Jakeem Grant managed to get another touch from another location. And the irony is he got it on the ground, not via the pass, <laughs> as has typically been the way. Just pick it up and go. <laughs> that was like visions of Dean Steinkuhler in Nebraska right. back in the old days. In right? the Orange Bowl, that's right. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lined up in a victory formation, tight and bunched and then picked it right up take a look well there's no tom rathman or any of those guys out there but again <laughs> it's the same concept just a smaller body picking it up and running the opposite direction and, and really the right time to run it too i mean you're on the opposition's 40 and he is just <laughs> you talk about a play caller's delight that's it right there well they're 241 away from ending the seven year run of performances here at Darrell King Royal Stadium. You were, at, you were over in New York watching the game well into the evening oh, yeah. when Crabtree made that catch. The people forget the historical significance of that loss for Texas because in effect what it did was enabled Alabama and Florida to be one and two going into the SEC championship. Yeah, that victory for Texas Tech stole a lot of thunder away from Texas and they haven't forgotten it. It did. Here's the kick. Texas now needs two scores. And here goes Musa. But you call with Dajay Johnson. Dajay Johnson, look out. Inside the 40 at the 37. Late flag comes down. They might tack more on. And if Dajay Johnson would have hit the, the boundary, he probably would have outrun the kicker the last opportunity to stop him. Boy, this senior wants to be heard from before it's all said and done. All you need is a score, an onside. A personal foul grabbing the face mask by number 52 of the kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty in its first down. All right, let's go back to the touchdown in real time, Spencer. Well, again, pace and tempo played a factor. Watch how quickly they get on the field, Tim, here, and gather to the near side. The huddle confuses. A little lackadaisical are the Texas players back here now figuring out what's happened. The safeties are down. Everyone starts to come this direction. Before they figure out what happens, Grant has the ball seated in his hand, and he's headed for the end zone for a score. Then the kick return here. Texas trying to answer back. Finds a nice little ant lane and, and hits the boundary. I think if he stays outside, Tim, he perhaps continues for another 15 yards or so. From the 24-yard line now of Texas Tech. Long runs need to score and score quickly. Sweeps, tucks it. Inside the 10. Malik Jenkins makes the stop. A greater play as that was, I think Swoops is holding the ball just a little bit too long before he decides to run off. Again, he's not going to go through his progressions and hit the third or fourth receiver. He needs to run that football and score. Warren remains the setback. He gets it, and he's in for the touchdown. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Pretty basic. Regardless of the outcome, the eyes of Texas will be on this youngster after tonight's game. Win or lose. 
If I told you 92 points were in the offing today, what would you say? <laughs> He's at 276 now, so he passes Vince Young in 2005 in the sixth position. Now he's moving in all time on Benson and on Charles. 206 left in the game. Texas still has their two timeouts remaining. A remarkable evening for a senior running back of Texas Tech, a freshman running back from Texas. Absolutely a pure joy for us in the booth. We give thanks for a lot of things on this great American holiday. In our positions tonight, Spencer, we thank these two men for putting on quite a show. And it's just the opposite of what at least one of these two teams came in as their identifying characteristic. Again, Washington did a tremendous job against Kansas State, rushing for over 200, nearly 50 yards there, doubling up tonight, trying to get another performance and thrust them into that next level and pass that space where they've not right. been able to get a victory here right. and over seven chances. Remember the Kansas State-Texas Tech game got a little loose late. Yes, they did. And onside kicks went K-State's way. Guess what's coming now? You got to really think, though, I, I would pick Pooch it right over the top. I'm not so sure if I would go for a line driver here. This is the safety net right here. That's the guy that's got to make the play. Going for the high kick. It's loose. Yep. It's loose. Still on the ground. Texas Tech believes they got it. At the 42-yard line. Lorenzo Joe is down there. A lot of Longhorns had an opportunity. But it appears Texas Tech has got it. And it's J.D. on high. Outstanding young receiver, part of the hands team that comes away with it, but not before it bounced off a few guys. Yeah, Lauderdale was a guy circled right before the play and said that's where the hop is going to come. And again, it was an excellent job of execution. The Longhorns just couldn't finish and recover the football, but tremendous job of executing the onside kick. Longhorns have two timeouts left. Two minutes remain. Washington ahead for a few. Texas is going to call their second timeout, Tim. Well, the last time we mentioned it, back in 2008, both teams undefeated. The Horns were ranked number one. Graham Harrell would be the difference in the game. A remarkable performance. And at the end, this catch by Crabtree, the tightrope act, perhaps the biggest win ever as Texas Tech took down Texas 39-33. to And it was during that period of the BCS where the SEC got awfully fortunate. Yes, they did indeed. Very fortunate. Second and seven from the 46. Mahomes is going to keep it. And he has spun down at the 48-yard line. Jason Hall and another quick timeout taken. 146. Jason Hall staying in position there to minute, limit the damage on that. And Tim, what was the difference between that era we just talked about and now? The common denominator was excellent quarterback player, lack thereof. Cole McCoy was the last all-conference quarterback during that 2008-2009 season that they've had since that time. College football on FS1 is presented by K. Jewelers. Third down and two. Thing to remember about Texas Tech now is how much time they want to utilize in converting this play. If they take 10 seconds with no first, then they're going to leave some time. Get a first down, it's ball game. But they could also take a lot of time and not get a first down and really leave none for the Longhorns. It all depends on how long these plays take. Mahomes, he's got it. Got it. That should be ball game. Victory formation time for Texas Tech. Wow. 
And they pulled out everything in Kingsbury's kitchen sink to earn this victory. Eight and five in 2013. That got out to that quick start. Four and eight a season ago. And on their way to becoming a seven and five team and bolstering their bowl opportunities, improving upon that. And taking away any chance that Texas would have had at a postseason. And with a young team, they could have really used it. This is going to be a huge win for Texas Tech, Timmy, for a lot of reasons. This is not the reception, but at least not the least of which. Dr. Pepper, one of a kind, play of the game. And I'm, I'm guessing Jay and Dan will have that as the one of the evening. They should. You know, just like that immaculate reception, what was that, December 1972? Yes. But Brad, Bradshaw made the throw. It was Tatum that made the hit. Frenchie John Fuqua. It was, it was, no, Franco Harris caught it. Franco caught it. But it was Frenchie Fuqua that was down there that was the pass was intended for. He was hammered. The ball got loose after Tatum hitting it. But what that did, though, it reversed four decades of futility. <laughs> and that was their first playoff win. Yeah. I like that, Texas Tech. This could be their inflection point, no question. And congratulations to Cliff Kingsbury and his Texas Tech Raider program. Trust me, a win against Texas, no matter where their program is in today's college football, matters a great deal to the folks down in Lubbock. Well, they deserve every bit of it, both sides. Well, our final, 48-45 Texas Tech. Don't go anywhere, because Fox Sports Live is about to start with Jay and Dan right now.